from downtown Los Angeles, or downtown, La pardon me, I got a frog in my throat. From downtown Los Angeles, Harmontown is once again in session. Don't think of it as losing a Spencer. Think of it as gaining a Rob Schraub. Let's bring out the mayor of Harmon Town. You know him, if you like him. His name is Dan Harmon. Thank you, thank you for coming. My name is Mr. Drummond. I got a different trope for you. It's called fucking in your mama. What you gonna do? All right, come on. My 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 future mother-in-law's here tonight. Don't let's not uh, rap about fucking people's mamas. Uh, 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 so, so the the marriage is is it's on. It's happening. I get my ring. Uh, it got resized. My uh, fiance, uh, she uh, she sneakily behind my back because she's like, there's always a challenge. Like, what do you, how do you know their ring size? Like, well, if they're divorced, you get the last ring, <laughs> which I had already thrown into the cracks of doom as I was told to do by Gandalf. Like, like, like uh, but. It, it was not unmade there. No, Levy like conspired behind my back. They have my old wedding ring, and uh, they. But it, I, I get either marriage like either makes your knuckles bigger, or it may, like you flex your wedding. Uh, I, I, it didn't fit. It was too tight. I don't know what happened. I got. It's, I hope it's muscle. I hope I gained muscle. <laughs> but I needed it to be whitened. You by, got that Dave Klein finger muscle going on there. Yeah, I think that's what it was. Anyways, it's on my finger now. It's only mildly. Distracting. I I twist it and I play with it, and uh, I'll never take it off. Oh, gross! <laughs> oh, hi, Rob. <laughs> I haven't seen you in months. <laughs> How are you? I'm fine. I'm why, why haven't you been on the show lately? I don't know. When when was the last time you asked me to come on? Are people supposed to invite you every week? Like, yeah. <laughs> I, what is it? I, Do right, it come, now. Well, come every week. All right. All right. Can I just say that once? You just did, yes. Okay, well, I've said it before. When? What time? <laughs> this is Shrop backstage, like right before we came on stage. This is like uh, to uh, Cody. He's like, what's that? Let me get that. <coughs> oh, shit. God. Oh, that was too much. Too much. <laughs> So keep That's your eye on him. Terrible impression of me. <laughs> I don't act like that. Uh, no, God, I, I only I have do one thing to talk like about, that. and then we'll bring up our guests. So tonight, tonight's an emotionally complicated night. So, uh, like, like, run out, scalp your tickets while you can. <laughs> it's an emotionally complicated night. Uh, uh, 911 operators. I, 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 I'm a, I'm a true crime podcast listener. Uh, we have a 911 operator. Uh, Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, you're, you, you, you're like, my favorite topic, too. Uh, the, 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 it, it's, it's, I just don't, it's, you listen to true crime podcasts, like, what, what, are you, like, what uh, Jeff, call me with an emergency. All right. Uh, uh, doo -doo -doo. Hello? 911, what's uh, your emergency? I, I, I'm, uh... Sir, you need to calm down. <laughs> Just tell me what's going on. I, I, I think there's a burglar downstairs. Uh, sir, I understand, but you need to calm Brrr. down. Hold on. 911, what's your emergency? Hey, I'm burgling in his house. <laughs> sir, you need to calm down. <laughs> hey, I'm going to burgle your house after I get done here. <laughs> well, <I don't, laughs> my, my bit's been uh, superseded by a more, uh, much more interesting bit that I'd rather do, but I don't yeah. know what to do. Yeah. Uh, sir, you need to give me the candelabra. <laughs> okay, <And I'll>, okay, <laughs> all right. Okay, can you hold? No problem. Uh, sir? Yeah, I, are you talking to my burglar right now? <laughs> sir, you need to... Hey, you I'm need... burgling for you. I'm in the other room. Yeah, yeah, but, but like, can, I, can I get a word in edgewise with my 911 dispatch? Oh, okay. All right, yeah. Just, like, sir, uh, you need to turn your radio down. What? 
I, I, I'm not calling it on a radio show. I'm calling. I'm. Ca- I'm calling. Remember, that the, was always the thing. Millennials probably don't know about that because it was like the 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 radio day. Was like all, all radio, all like local radio. They were like, all right, it's about five o'clock. We're playing all the hits of the Aerosmiths coming up. Like, what do you want? And it would be like nine times out of ten, it'd be a guy going, like, Hey, hey, my name is Dave. 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 What's up? Right, but you gotta, gotta gotta turn that radio down. You gotta. I know it's exciting to be on the radio, but you gotta. If it's on while you're on the phone, then the then the radio is gonna go into this the microphone of the phone, and then we're gonna be listening to you, listening to you. It's, it's a it's a tough thing to. It's kind of a Christopher Nolan thing, but. Uh, <laughs> You gotta, you gotta fucking figure it out. Like, uh, be a professional. And mute that radio. Talk to us as if we're no big deal, and then we'll, you'll sound good sir, for everybody else. S- sir, this guy's burglarizing my home right now. <laughs> sir, I need you to calm down. I'm fucking. You, you, you seem more, more stressed out than I am. I'm, I'm just, tr- I'm in my closet hiding, and I, I, I have a weapon. For real, if you listen to true crime podcasts for a year, I, I now feel like. If something happens to me, if I come home and Cody has lost an arm, I'm I I like I'm gonna try to figure out. I'm gonna like Google what to do if you lose an arm before calling nine one one because I don't want to end up like having the recording of me pondered over by people. Like, oh, he doesn't sound very upset. I think he cut off her arm. But if you call them and go like like like, oh my god. Oh my God, my girlfriend's arm got cut off. They're like, sir, 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 <laughs> calm down. Now, what's your address? Oh my God, it's one, two, three, four, Fiction Street. I don't know. <laughs> uh, they're like, sir, sir. Like, why are you still chastising me? Can't we, after the point where you get the address and you're, an ambulance is on the way, can I have permission to freak out about the dead body I found? And or do I have your permission to be enough on the spectrum that the one thing I'm good at is calling 911? I'm so sick of this fucking like the the, the oh he's a listen to this 911 call and just, it just seems a little weird. Uh, hello 911. Yeah, uh, my children are missing. Um, your children are missing. Yeah, they're missing and uh, it's noon now and I haven't seen them since 11:30 and then it's just like. Like going up and saying, "Ooh, he sounds ro- He sounds like a robot. Ooh, he's a robot. What is he, a robot? Fuck everyone. <laughs> I'm never calling nine one one. I'm gonna do something wrong." Dan, who have you killed? I'm never gonna kill anybody. But yes, you, you, you are, and you're, you're and you're, you're, <laughs> and it's you're- only a matter of time before we're all adjacent to a murder. God forbid, we, like, like, I just don't think it's fair that people like, analyze how you respond to a trauma. Right. I also, like, here's the thing, we're gonna have our, uh, if you, if, look, if you're a big fan of our podcast and you just want, I'm not like an Oprah or like Picture Pages thing where I'm like, you have to listen to this, and, uh, but, but you should know, in March, uh, uh, the Red Handed podcast uh, ladies are coming out from Jolly England. Um, they're gonna come out and, and be our guests, and uh, so like you have that heads up, like maybe. What are we talking about? Get, get addicted to that, that that podcast. Wonderful, best true crime podcast I've heard ever recently, and uh, the uh, red ladies from England. God damn it! Like, uh, for, all right, forget. Let's just move what on. What is happening? How long have I been gone? Your beard is gray and long. Jeff, you seem so much further away than usual. <laughs> One thing that I like about their <laughs> podcast, <laughs> the Red Handed Podcast, which is a true crime podcast. The Red Handed. It's called Red Handed. Figure it out. Wait, you're oh, an adult. Oh, okay, I'm thinking mittens. I'm sorry. Red you're Handed. You're thinking mittens? Yeah, I Why? Use, why I, are you thinking of I have a pair of red mittens. That's why I'm thinking of it. Listen to yourself. You sound like a, you <laughs> Sir. You need to calm down. T- I I've, I've come home my my father drank a weird <laughs> lemonade. He's All right. Um Anyways, the thing I like about 
one of the many things I like about their podcast is that every single time a lie detector comes up, right. it's it's time to like open re, like we have to revolt against this. The lie detectors are bullshit. It's bullshit. Who did you kill? Such you killed somebody. You you you're, you're, you're there's a body that you're that never killed anybody. Never gonna kill anybody. And at some point in my life before I die, I will be somehow misconstrued and judged because of my affect. And whether it's like I, f I fail a polygraph test or I refuse to take one, which is like, oh, you're, oh, that's weird. He refused to take a polygraph test. Who, who the fuck? Everyone, please refuse to take every polygraph test. They, they mean nothing. It's the amateurs that screw it up for the rest of us. The amateur polygraph uh, administrators? Or do you mean... <laughs> Or amateur yes. liars. Yeah, yeah. All right, look. Take your pick. I can see it's going to be one of those shows. Wait, I, Dan, uh, look, look me in the eye. I, I know like a few of like the main like five tells when you're telling a about lie. lying. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to so ask you're you like a human polygraph. I'm going to ask you a question that we both know the answer to, okay. but I want you to tell me the wrong answer. <sighs> okay. Um, what's your middle name? James. Yeah. You already did. You did two of the tells. All right. You already. You, 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 two you, of the what kind of tells? Lies. That's my name. You asked me what my middle name. No, no. Was. I t I told you to do it wrong. I I told you to lie. Well, I didn't lie. I was no, testing I, you. I told you to lie. And I told the truth yeah, and which, revealed which, that you which, don't know the difference. You're supposed to. You're supposed yeah. to give the wrong answer. And when you think you, I'm and, lying, and you confidently you told perceive me, it as a lie. Okay, so now that's the biggest right, fucking. So, I'm nailed. So now, it. now lie. Now lie to me. I will. I promise to lie to you. Okay. <laughs> What's what? What day is today? Three. <laughs> I swear to God. I fucking swear to God. Okay. Strike me with lightning if it's not three today. All right. Um, what is your mother's maiden name? Yellow. <laughs> you see, you're you're going to jail with an E. You killed somebody. I'm going to jail. You, you killed somebody. I did. I killed you, nobody. You keep, you, I didn't you're, kill you're, anybody. You're, 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 Spencer you're, isn't here tonight. <laughs> did you kill Spencer? Polygraph test. You are garbage. killed Spencer. You're trying to get out in front of this 9/11 call and your lie detector test because you murdered Spencer. <laughs> Look, and, and while you hesitate. <laughs> You have the right to remain silent. Look, my first guest, uh, millennials know her as Ida Blankenship uh, from uh, 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 Mad Men. All right. Uh, Gen Xers know her as Mama LaRusso. From, I know her as from, my the, from the Karate Kid. Right. Yeah. I know her as my future mother-in-law. Can you please welcome Randy Heller to the stage? <laughs> Randy Heller. Have a seat. How many days did you work on Karate Kid? Like, how, how, how many days of a shoot was that for you as Mama Larissa? You don't have your call sheet? <laughs> I guess I worked about three, four weeks or something. Oh, yeah? Is this working? Yeah. Okay. You got to eat that mic, though. Oh. Yeah. Uh, well, I guess let's get this out of the way. Yeah. I want to cement this. I've mentioned it before. It's been a theory, but I want to make it a technical fact. As of your daughter proposing to me, I am now officially and technically a karate kid in law. That's right. <laughs> In every way that matters. My son. Yeah. To be. Yeah. No, you're already my son. And you're stoked about it, right? I'm you... very. I, you I... know that I love you. You know that. We've determined that. I... Not at first, no. Not so much. <laughs> it wasn't. It wasn't love at first sight. But he's grown <laughs> on me. A, like, a lot like of me a fungus. joining your... A lot of me joining your family is yeah. learning what love really is. Like, from, yeah. I mean, my relationship with Cody, I'm like, oh, that's what love, oh, shit. Like, there's no knocking on any previous relationship I've ever had. I just sort of like, and then I join your, your family. You guys really love each other. It's really, it can be alienating and dizzying to, so, to a, an astronaut 
from the from the vacuum of. I can understand that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, a lot of but us. But don't count yourself in yet just yet. No, no, no. I won't. All right. <laughs> I just want to, you know, step by step. Right? Yeah, that makes me comfortable. I like knowing that there's like airlocks and like <laughs> conditions. I, I that makes me comfortable. Like, like, like for instance, yes. like I remember distinctly, very shortly into me dating Cody, which was a. A pretty intense re rebound. I can say that now that it's like permanent, but I mean, there was no indications. I, I was like, I was dating Cody very quickly after the divorce of my last relationship, which made both of us ponder things. Anyway, put a pin in my view on this. This is about you. <laughs> I, you, you had this apartment in New York, or you were staying at Cody's apartment in New York. Yes. And uh, I went to visit her on her first show, because she did this show called Deadbeat for three seasons, right. and I went to visit her. Oh, you don't have to plug me. I'm getting it. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's Cody. 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 Wait, come out here. I feel Not now, much Cody. safer. With... Come out, Cody. No, she doesn't have to. Come on, Cody. Come on. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. I'm, I'm totally in love with this child. Hi, everyone. Cody, grab a seat. Come on, grab a sit mic. down. So um, she got this show, and she's on this show. She's eat like, that mic. Huh? Eat you got to oh, eat, eat the it, mic. Eat it. Eat, eat it. it. Okay. Closer. Ah. So she gets the show, and I'm like thrilled. My kid has her own show. And so I went to New York to visit her. And it's cold in New York. So I bought a lot of stuff to warm myself, because it's freezing. A hat, gloves, coat. Okay, but Wait, first hold on. Okay, all right. See what it's like this to is be, what, you know. But you uh, brought her out. I know. You brought me out. So, <laughs> so if this Get gets frustrating, yeah. Like. So should I continue the yeah, story? Been, all right, yeah. so I bought this huge scarf to uh, keep me oh, warm. Oh, jeez, okay. You're, Here right, okay, it is. Yes. I'm on I my own, I brought you up right? for the scarf story. Okay, yes, continue. It's a scarf story. All right. So I bought this enormous <laughs> long white and black scarf to keep <laughs> my neck warm. And it was not that cute. Like, you tried it on, and we looked at it, and we both agreed it wasn't that cute. Or I at least... Okay, I at least thought that. There really? was contention about the scarf. Oh, it so was there very, was it initial was contention? I Okay, um, you tell your version of it. You shouldn't have brought me out here. I, I'm not going to talk anymore. Just tell the scarf all story. All right, so I, I got all dressed up, and I'm supposed to meet her. For, for lunch or breakfast, whatever it was. So I put everything on knowing that I'm going to go out in like really freezing temperature. Big, long scarf. Now, when? Big, long fucking scarf. So I, you know, when you go on vacation, you're kind of off your routine, like going to the bathroom in the morning, you know, like at home, 8 o'clock. Talking about constipation irregularity. Yeah, yeah. right. It's like vacation alt altered uh, poop, you know. So, VAP, we call it in my family. We have a thing called VAPS, which was supposed to be an acronym, but it actually isn't, because vacation-induced... No, is, I what think is it's it? altered poop. No, So, in other words, not, instead of going to the bathroom at 8 o'clock, when you're, you're on vacation, your yeah. you're off. You're Throwing off your routine. Off. Yeah. So, I got all dressed up, and I didn't go but to nobody, the bathroom nobody, yet. Nobody, huh? Like, when, Why when, are you you're, when you're regular, you don't go, it's 8 o'clock, this is when I poop. Like, that's not... No, it, like every morning about 8 o'clock, I have to take a dump. <laughs> okay, all right, all right, fine. What's wrong with that? No, no there's nothing wrong with I've that. I've always They're... felt, that's why I always feel like I'm constipated because you made it seem to be like it was going to be this thing that happened every day to a given time, and it's not for me at all. Okay. I'm just saying, like, I all think right. that's part of why I always get constipated because I put this pressure uh, on myself. I, oh, I like, put, oh, it's I, not... Uh, that's a parenting that. fail. Like, you, know, you should have done better. Something happened there. You know what I'm I saying? I feel so bad now. I feel so guilty. <laughs> Something happened with my butthole that I have stuff going on with that, you well, know? I got my first hemorrhoid. I told you. I sent you a picture. I sent you a picture. <laughs> she, Remember, she I sent, sent you a close-up on a group text first hemorrhoid. to her and, and my sister because you well, said, I wanted you, to know you, for you, sure you, what you it said, was. You sent your mother a picture of your, of your hemorrhoid? Yeah, and then Dan saw it, too. Oh, these guys, yeah. <laughs> On accident. <laughs> oh, yeah. but you liked it. All right. But, so, like, you let's still just, liked I'm it though. Get this story out. <laughs> I'm fine with the seat. We, we route, told you. But I want to keep we, the train we, on rails. To, to be I fair, guys, we warned you. This is going to be a, an emotionally intense episode. <laughs> Hold so, on. so Hold you, on. so you. Oh. Yeah. Uh oh. All right. Well.
finished the story. Mom, finish the story. Right. Okay, we're, we're, I need help. We're, I need some help. So can we get, can we back up? Can we? I feel like we don't up? even. <laughs> yeah. I think you guys should I feel go like out we and come back need, on again. L- the way that she told whatever she just told about that, we can not talk about the, that for a second. Go back to what you were talking about was like the first time that you guys met. No, that doesn't matter. We've All accelerated. Right. Like, like, like she's halfway through the scarf story. I want. It's like right, we we'll go, go back. We'll go back. Hold on to the poop story. Hold on. Hold on. Go ahead. No. no. Go ahead. All right. Okay. Okay. I fucked it up. I fucked it up. Right. I took a sh- I took a shit in your apartment. Your we're mom was like, "It's fine. I like the smell of your fight shit." Okay. Right here. On the stage. Yeah, I'm gonna love that. Okay, okay, okay. God damn it, the Mom. fucking scarf story was Mom, like a scarf story. You, you, you met with the goddess <laughs> and now it's off the, the rails. Scarf story. <laughs> it's such a good story. <laughs> you okay. got build you, it up. Okay, okay. okay. I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna catch everybody All up. Alright, catch them up. Yes, dear. All right. Okay. Catch Previously up. on the scarf story, uh, Mom is visiting New York. She bought an outfit. She got this long warm, scarf. Warm, warm. Daughter, not into it. Getting that's all right. Get, getting dressed to go meet the daughter, and then so an unscheduled, unscheduled visitor. The poop, yeah. Like, you know, your stomach starts to, like, turn, and I'm going, oh, fuck, it's 8 and 12 o'clock New York time. I'm way off my schedule. I got to go to the bathroom. So it's, like, time to go meet you. And I said, well, I'm not going to take all my clothes off, my scarf, my hat, my gloves. I'm just going to go to the bathroom. So I went, and... It was a mess because I got up and the scarf went into the toilet. My hundred and fifty dollars scarf into the into the potpourri. Of and you had pope. shit on all top over. of it. Yeah, no. Now the shit is all over the scarf. The scarf had gone into the toilet, and right. you shit on top of it. Yeah. Okay, I I walk in. No, I didn't shit on top of it. It was you already shit, on the shit scarf. in there. Yeah. Wait, what do you mean there was shit the already scarf. in there? I shit, and when I well, got the scarf... Well, how would there be scarf, shit already in there? Wait a minute. No, because I got up in the scarf because it was so long, went into the toilet. Aww. What do you have to I thought you sa- I thought before you sat, the scarf went into the toilet, and then yeah. you took a big dump right. on the scarf. Right, yeah. right. You're saying right. the same thing. You're saying the same We're thing We're saying now. the same thing. <laughs> yeah, okay. Love it, right. person. God, I thought... Okay. Oh, my God, I thought... Okay, so... I you got, shit and I'm now on what the am scarf. I, what am I gonna, on, the, on scarf. the scarf. And just, it had fringe, fringes. So all the fringes were, so I got, and I, uh, so I got up and I went, But oh I, I feel God. like I walked in. No, you were gone. This, no? You were okay, gone. Okay, well, if this, if I had seen this, I would have flipped the fuck out because I remember you, uh, like being uh, in the apartment, remember how I was just like always mad at you for making messes? Right. I would have flipped out if I knew that she you, So you were trying to hide it from me. But you did flip out because what happened is so I took the scarf out oh, yeah, and I started I washing it. it, really scrubbing it down, thinking I could do this, I can make this happen. Yeah. So I scrubbed it down and then I took it and I laid it out on Cody's heater to dry it. Oh! She was not happy. Like, look, it, nothing smelled. She washed it properly. It, it was, was just gone. the idea. It was gone. It was, it was like a idea, brand like new it was... scarf. At, yeah. So uh, I went to have lunch. We, we came. He, likes the, he likes the story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we came, uh, we came back and I said, Cody, the scarf that's on the dryer was full of shit. But it's clean now. She flipped out. She goes, what do you mean you put it on my dryer? This shit scarf. Yeah. <laughs> right? Because I have a little bit of OCD. She has a I'm little OCD, germ, germophobic. Yeah. I'm a lot right. phobic. I'm yeah, a lot better. You're the but best yeah. part. So the best yeah, yeah, part okay. is, and I said, okay, now I got to go home to New York. So I went back to New York. To LA. To LA. To LA. Oh, I mean, sorry. L- LA. And the shit's gone to my friend. So I went home and I kept the tissue paper and the bag from this store. So I wrapped it up and I said, I'm going to fucking return this thing because I'm not going to wear a scarf no. that has poop no. on it. No. There's no way that no. I am going to put a poop. I know that the poop is, you know, residue, you know. So I went to the store and I went up to the lady and I said, I'd like to return this You're scarf. You're a bad person. Wait, wait, wait. Well, put a pin in that. Okay. Here, we're almost there. All right. And, and, she, the, and she said, said to me, is there anything wrong with it? And, and you said? <laughs> I said, no, 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 it's fine. It's just that I bought it for my daughter. And it's like 12 feet long. 
and she's very short. And every time she wears it, she steps on it and trips, so I'd like to return it. And that was the that wasn't the very good. Stuff. God damn it! That's, that's not, not you the said punchline. Thing. What did right. I tell you? Said you? The first right, time. Let me let me what? finish the story. All right, I I'd like to return this scarf. She said, "Ask me what's why. wrong with it." Well, it's too long, and my daughter didn't like it. Yeah, that's oh, how you said it to us. Which is true, <laughs> because it's so like long it. that it went in the toilet. And you I took did a not shit on it, and your daughter didn't like it because it was coated in shit. But you just leave certain details I out, and then up. you return it. I All right. Up. Is, is no, somebody is somebody in New York walking around wearing a poop scarf? Probably. No, I no, don't no, think in LA. The reason that I didn't get that upset about it is because I was like, no one's ever gonna buy this. Like that's the kind of store where it has like the clearance section, and right. it will just disappear into oblivion. And so that's why I didn't admonish you. I was like, uh, ultimately when I found out, I was like, all right, it's a flawed thing a character would do, but it's still I, funny I as say, shit. I have to say, Randy, <laughs> yes, that if you poop on a scarf, yeah. don't try to get the money back. <laughs> just, well, I just, did it. You, you, I just you, was going to exchange it for credit. <laughs> 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 oh, fuck, I saved that one. Uh, you're, I, 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 I want to segue into an, a, a, another guest that's like, I'm, I've been doing like a, 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 a public uh, television thing where we're like linking things, and it's, it, that's why it's emotionally complicated. Because you're my future mom in law. You pooped on a scarf. Uh, you were Mama LaRusso. You were. Uh, but she, she was Rizzo in Greece on Broadway. You were Rizzo. You she were the original Broadway. Rizzo, right? Were you, or no, there was one original Rizzo. But then, wait, were you the original Rizzo or not? No. You, you still weren't. love me? Wait, well, no, but, but, but I mean, but after, like, who I played was on original Rizzo? Adrian Barbeau. And, uh, no. Wait, yeah. Wait. On Broadway, Adrian Barbeau. Oh, okay. Right, Adrian, really? Adrian Barbeau? Yeah, Adrian Barbeau. From Swamp Barbeau. Thing? <laughs> huh? So, I, I know her as, say, as Adrian Barbeau from Swamp Thing. Like she was oh, an right. 80s, yes, like, like, yes. like, like, like she bazoombas, she like breasts, B, kind of yes. like 80s B movie right. kind of thing. Yeah, she was the I original. Okay, she was original Rizzo, but then you like did a Came, huge run of Rizzo on yes, Broadway. You were basically two yeah. years. And uh, and so our next guest was uh, uh, Johnny Angel. Johnny Angel. Does anybody? Do you guys Teen know Grease? Teen, Teen Angel. Why is Teen it Angel. Johnny Angel? Uh, the beauty, be beauty school home. dropout. The song, like the guy comes and he sings the beauty right. school dropout. Beauty Anyways, school. I'll explain the. I'll explain w w beyond that connection w why we're bringing him up. Uh, okay. Please welcome Bob Garrett. Bob Garrett. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for coming. I'm very nervous because Randy gave me this scarf for my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> Mom, you got to talk into the oh, mic. Yeah, eat yeah. that mic. Sorry, um, we know each other from college, and then we did uh, Godspell together, and then Grease to get on Broadway. So we go back a long, long fifty years. But he tells everybody I'm his nanny. You're correct. So yeah, <laughs> and a good one you were. Oh, I was the best. Uh, but Bob, there is a, a, there is a, there's a linkage here. I mean, I, look, I'm not a good podcast host. I'm not a good podcast producer. Uh, but but uh, things happen. We follow our our guts and our feelings and stuff. And uh, we we recently lost a friend that we've talked about many times on this podcast, like kind of in the periphery. Like we've we've probably mentioned his name a dozen or two dozen times in three hundred and some episodes because he was so instrumental to our lives. This guy Sam Christensen, and uh, and he he just recently passed a few weeks ago. And it was like very unexpected. And uh, I know, that, uh, weirdly, Randy had a connection to him. I mean, I know Sam knew you and Cody, but that was just like weird coincidence. And I said, Randy, will you come on the show? And like now seems like a good time because maybe you could tell some Sam stories. And you're like, I'm not. I don't know Sam well enough to like eulogize him. But Bob, who you've met, like was really close to him. You saw him right before his passing, and so I thought, Kismet, we need to eulogize Sam Christensen, someone that, like, he's not a household name, but if you've listened to this podcast for hundreds of episodes, then Sam has, like, been caressing and touching you the entire time, because 
Jeff and I's origin stories go back and intertwine with Sam. And so, uh, uh, so for those of us, uh, like, let's kind of like now just like remember him and start with how do you, how did you meet Sam, Bob? Well, we were doing Godspell, and Sam was the liaison between the, the actors and the producers. He worked for the producers. And he was so great, and every time he'd come to the theater, he'd say, by the way, tonight, Paul Newman and Joanne Woodward are here. <laughs> and they're not coming backstage, because Paul doesn't come backstage. And then Paul Newman would walk into the theater in an all-white suit in February. But uh, Do you he, know who Paul Newman is? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they've heard so of him. Anyway, he... The salad he, dressing guy. Yeah. The, the salad dressing guy. The salad dressing guy. I started doing uh, cabaret acts, and I didn't want to ruin my reputation with the owners, so I asked Sam to represent me, and that turned into him becoming my full-time manager. And then we became best friends, and then he ultimately got me to come out to Los Angeles to, for meetings and manage me, and he became like my best friend. And somewhere along there, I don't know what date that is, uh, uh, but... So what I know of Sam is that he's he's working with actors in this capacity. He was like he was an assistant to casting directors. He was uh, he worked on Mash, um, like in some capacity, like below the casting director, right? But well, this is how brilliant he was. He started out working for a ca as an associate with a casting director, and then he opened his own agency and he came out here. And the, one of the first things he cast was the movie Network. Yeah, and he started to say when he got the script, you have to cast Faye Dunaway in this part. And they said, oh, we can't afford Faye Dunaway and she'll never do it. And we have a little budget and everything. So they brought in every B actress in Los Angeles to, re to read for this part. And they kept saying, we for can't- For network? For network. And we can't get anybody. And why is nobody good? And he said, Faye Dunaway, why won't you let me? She'll never do it. She'll never do it. We can't afford it. He said, just let me get the script to her. I promise you, she'll pay you to do it. And they sent the script to her, and she said, I don't care what it costs you, I, I, what, what I get, I want to do this film. Then she won the Academy Award. So then he opened his own agency and did MASH and did all these things. And he was... Said, Sam totally uh, demurred when, when I asked him about that. He made it sound like he was just kind of an ancillary character in that story, but it, I didn't know that he actually helped cast that movie. He was the one. He was the Faye Dunaway guy. Wow. That story makes perfect sense, and it makes perfect sense that Sam never told it that way. I, I, <laughs> right. I, I had heard right. about him being involved with that, but he, yeah, he downplays like, like to, it. To give some context, if you don't know who we're talking about, Sam... Um, when I was 24 years old, I had a girlfriend who had taken his class, and he does this kind of essence like workshop where you find out essentially who you are. And you get seven kind of statements to describe exactly why you are who you are, whether you like it or not. And um, my, my the, the girlfriend at the time said, I, I was broke, and she goes, find the money, take the class, don't ask any questions. And I ended up doing it, and it really was the reason I started started working because like you 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 have this self knowledge, and then I told like Dan and Rob and everybody, and I told Drew Carey about it, and Drew Carey now s still sent everybody to. It's like you have to find out who you are, and even if you think you know who you are, you don't have the permission to say out loud what it is that makes you you, and find out how people perceive you. Because yeah. Sam's philosophy was uh, when you're when you're on a playground. You know, you're starting to, you're having this obsession with like, how, who am I? How do people perceive me? And the thi the very things that make you unique, anything that makes you stand out, you're tall, you're short, you're black, you're you're you have freckles, you. But more importantly, your personality, you're sloppy, you're neat, you're they, like you're practicing being exceptional, and everyone else is practicing being everyone else. And you you call, you go into your adulthood with these traumatic kind of like labels about the things that people pointed out about you as you were developing, because whatever made you different than everyone else, absolutely, this is not like 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 society's job is to try to like call you out and go, you're sloppier than everyone else. You're fatter, you're taller, you're weirder, you're slower, you're faster. But when you're a kid and you're developing, you're like, okay, I need to fix that shit or I'm in big trouble. Um, and uh, you, it's right of you to like want to fit in, 
But then once you hit 18, 19, 20, it's time for you to drop that shit, actually. Like, your body's designed to drop that shit, but society's not, de not designed to tell you when it's time to let that go. Because Sears and McDonald's are more than happy to step in and go, hey, you don't want to be fucking weird. Buy a Happy Meal. Like, no one's going to tell you to drop that shit. Sam's class was telling you, okay, time to drop that shit. What... What sparks your shame? What what may, what go through his exercises would be go through all your love letters from high school, go through your yearbook signings. Um, yeah, we, we've been getting called the same names since we were children and into our adulthood. And if somebody likes you, and like like let's let, let's say like Dan for instance, there's a way to describe how Dan is smart. If you like Dan. You say, "Oh, he's a genius. He's a, he's an intellect. Like he's a, he's a, he's a, he's a like a, he's a mastermind." If you don't like Dan, you go, "Oh, like he's a you no, know. he's a genius, and I hate him." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but but being able to say in a couple words exactly how you're smart, Cody and and and, and Bob, like, like like what makes you um, edgy or what, what makes you um, the, the neighborhood of how we would describe you as being witty, but precisely say it. And there's these words that we have all been called our whole lives. Like Sam pointed out early on when I first met him, and he said, Catherine Hepburn, when she was 18, and did, or 19, when she did Philadelphia Story, every review called her feisty. When she was 80-something and she did On Golden Pond, everybody called her crusty. Um, if you're feisty at 18 and crusty at 80, what, what, the, what, the, what the essence is is, Defiant. <laughs> and like, like, you don't need men. Right. And that's what made, um, uh, what made her great was that her, all of her roles was, I don't need you. And if you're 18 or, or 80, it's a defiance. We and, have and different it's, it's ways of saying what's special about you. The, their memories of what's said that's special about you on the playground are probably negative. Then you have lovers throughout your life. They find the positive ways of saying it. It doesn't really matter. And also, crucially, it doesn't matter whether they're accurate. Sam always used the example of Goldie Hawn, who is a very, very smart actor, who um, could, she, could, she could debate your ass off on any topic. She uh, happens to be intellectual. She, and when she was young, she it was like it was her the way the public wanted to perceive her, the way that she would get gigs. The it was like. You, pe the people looked at her and said, "You're an airhead. You're a b bimbo. You're a blonde uh, 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 idiot. Whatever. Like, like you're, you're. Th th there's probably healthier ways to say that, but that are equally not acknowledging the truth about her intellect or her depth. But if you're, if you're presenting yourself to the public and you're for public consumption, it's not, it's, it's not necessarily a bad thing if people don't know." everything about you. Right, because it's, it's not the way you see you, but the way the world sees you. And when you kind of step on that gas pedal and go, I always use the example of Louis Anderson who would start his stand-up act and he would do five or six fat jokes and then, uh, and then he would pause and he'd wait and the laughter would subside and he goes like, I start my set with a bunch of fat jokes because I know, it's like, oh, it's so predictable, but also if I don't start my set that way, uh, you guys are going to be out there for 45 minutes, and some of you are going to be like, do you think he knows? <laughs> uh, and I always equated that with Sam's thing, where it was like, charisma is Christopher Walken knowing he's creepy. Charisma right. is Jack Nicholson knowing he's dirty. Charisma is a fat person like leaning into the... the, the, the they're like, well, I'm not going to try to convince you I'm not fat. That has nothing to do with me endorsing body shaming or like you know, thinking it's better to be thin or whatever. It's just like, like th there's, a, there's, a, there's a weird energy you exude the day you go, well, I, I, I'm kind of on the same page with how I, I am perceived at first glance. And it kind of blows your mind. You, it, it's actually more likely that you're way off because of the amount of refraction, and I just remember can, the exercises we, can, that yeah, we did. Yeah, can you tell us about the airport thing? Because that was yeah, the I've, one I've that was Yeah, I've said it on the really show before, too. It's like, yeah. like just so I'll try to rush through it, but it was like, that was my big eye-opener where I was like, okay, this guy's not full of shit. We went to the airport. It was pre-9-11, so you could just walk around the airport. And we, we, we would we'd do this exercise where we handed out 
forms and yeah, uh, it, it sounded like the worst idea. Like like this. Oh, this sounds like a horrible homework assignment to go to the airport. So with people somebody all else around the, the international terminal are handed these forms and they go like. So your classmates say, "Look at that guy." So that guy's me. I don't say a word. I'm just I just lean yeah, against like, the like pillar. standing standing hundred feet away over by a pillar and you go like, like. And you have this sheet in front of you with three hundred words on it, and they don't give you a limit. They don't ask you to engage like doing it right or wrong. It's just Circle any word that you think applies to that guy over there, right there. He's down with it. It's fine. You can stare at him. He's, we're part of a psychology class, we would say. And, uh, and so they'd sit there, circle. People from Poland, people from Memphis, people from Fort Lauderdale. Like it's a, you're just in this LAX terminal. You, you do that for five hours. You leave LAX with a giant stack of papers. You go home. You tabulate everything. And then I'm like, why the fuck does everyone in the world think I'm sarcastic? <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and lazy. And, 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 and you're, you're just standing there. I, I went with a guy that looked like Charles Bronson. He was a weird dude. And we get in the car, and we did like 50 of them. And he's going through. He's like, <sighs> he's looking from side to side. He's like, guy, what the fuck? What? The, what? What? The, God damn it! Why does everybody think I'm suspicious? <laughs> uh, and and, and Shrub went to the <laughs> weekend class with Shrub. You're not supposed to look at your cards when you go to lunch, by the way. You were told. What? Yeah. What did I uh, what? So Schraub looked at his cards, uh, apparently, because like, we, we, we did the same class. Like We took the, we were there for I mean, hours, and then you go to lunch. This is, this is classmates writing down things about you uh, so like then they, You take the class, and then your other classmates write shit down as you get these exercises. I go, we go okay, go, go to lunch. That was my impression of Sam. Um, and Schraub and I are walking down the sidewalk, and Schraub's like, <laughs> and I'm like, what, what, what's wrong? He's it, like, ah, nothing. Well, what did you get on your cards? And I, I, I didn't look at my cards. You're not supposed to look at your cards. And Rob's like, rah, rah. and I'm like, what, what, what did you, what, okay, obviously you looked at your cards. What's your problem? And Rob goes, I am not C3PO! <laughs> <laughs> I, <laughs> waving it's his hands totally around with his your, elbows it, locked no, at 90 degrees as no. if... As if fucking no. first bound of all, by... First fu- of all, first of all, if I did that, I would be nothing like C-3PO because he never did that. Yeah. <laughs> Anthony Daniels fucking... No, no, you're, right. you're embellishing to, to Okay, well, that's how I remember it because you're coding like C-3PO. Well, Sam, uh, part of the class, which is amazing, is like he, he gives you... You kind of find out myth- mythologically who you are and like what your myth is, like where you live on Mount Olympus and what the story is that you tell. Because all of our favorite like actors and actresses, they all kind of pr- portray the same role in different ways, but they're always kind of fulfilling a same kind of myth. And I asked Sam, was it what's your myth? And he said, mine is to remove fear. And and if y- you could say anything great about Sam, and there's lots of great things to say. Sam took fear away from people, and he gave you like freedom. He created this environment where I was got. I was in my twenties. I was the worst version of me, and that's me talking. I'm already not a good person. <laughs> Imagine me at 25, like 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 where I'm like still cutting my teeth, being a human being, and it's like. But there was this space. Anyways, I think what we wanted to do is like 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 we could have we could have at any point talked about. Oh, these are Sam's superpowers. This is why you should be interested in him. I think Bob, your contribution to it is I you were you were very close to him for for his whole life. And I I I asked you backstage, it kind of caught me off guard. It was like, when's the last time you saw him? Because we saw him relatively recently, yeah. but you saw him two weeks ago. Well, he'd come to my house every Friday night and we'd watch Bill Maher and we'd cook. And one of the things, talk about taking away fear. Yeah. You know, I just got a <laughs> soup maker, right? So I said, I'm going to make soup for you in my new soup maker, which takes 18 minutes. So I make this soup and he said, he tastes it and he says, yeah, yeah. And I said, what do you mean, yeah? He <laughs> said, it's, it's good, but what would make it great is if you added an entire lemon to the soup. So I squeezed the lemon into the soup, and he said, this is the best soup I've ever had. <laughs> well, he's kind of, he's, he's pulling a little trick there. He's, he's like, I think I'll create a story where I knew exactly what needed to be in the soup. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So when, when, like, when you did Sam's great. class, the, the first part, back when, I, when I did it back in the old days, like, in, like when you still could go to the airport and do that thing, uh, later it became more like online and internet-based and faster, um, 
you would do the class, you would get your essences, and then if you wanted to keep going, you would do an acting class where you, you get a placard and you would put it on a music stand with your seven statements about who you were. And it's the, the kind of the neighborhoods of like all the things people know about you on site, but you don't know that people know that. And it was just getting used to admitting that and knowing that people saw that stuff. And then you would do a monologue. So you could be anything. It could be a, uh, I, I, I did something from Network, or you could do something from Shakespeare, or whatever the, whatever the hell. And there was a guy in the class, it was a black guy, uh, really good actor, and he did this piece, where it was like a really angry piece, I forget what it was, and he had a ball cap on, and Sam goes, let's do it again. I want you to turn your hat a little bit to the side. And instantly the guy looked furious. And he goes, just do it again. And turn your ball cap to the side. And he did it, and it was the fucking best acting you've ever saw. And when it was over, he instantly put his hat back straight. And Sam goes, why does that make you so angry? He goes, I don't want to be thought of as the guy that has the ball cap to the side. Uh. <laughs> he, says, like, like, and he goes, you see how close your anger is? Like, if you need it, all you have to do is be thought of or perceived as less than you are. Right, well that's the thing, is like if people think that you, if you find out what your essence is, that's equally empowering if you want to play the opposite of it or whatever, like being able to tap into your stuff. What, one thing I'm curious about Bob, now that he's gone, like you knowing Sam probably better than, than, than us on stage, like how did Sam like, did Sam have did like where where was he at? He was he was this kind of guru. But he had this studio in Burbank. My perception of him was always that he he had plans to make it bigger. He would do the internet version, and he was like he was trying to he was trying to empire build, which I totally relate to, which I have tried to do. Like oh, it's not enough that I'm just gonna do what I do. Was Sam? Was he frustrated about the business of being Sam, or was he content with it? Like no, he was content. First of all, he did a lot of traveling from, to New York and Atlanta and all over the country, and he'd go for weeks at a time. And that was very rewarding to him, because he blossomed this business to reach so many people. But it was a business of really having people center in on who they really are and how to maneuver them, their, their, themselves through life in a successful way. And that was incredibly rewarding to him. It just seems like such a, th uh, that's good. I'm glad that, because from my perspective, I always thought when I heard he passed, I was like, oh God, he never, he had just retired and, and he didn't, like, it was such a thankless job. He just put up with a bunch of dipshits like me forever. Like we just kept gathering at his feet and he would go, all right, Dan, uh, that's an interesting choice in that Fight Club monologue. Uh, <laughs> what, 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 what do you like about your mother? What, my mother? What does that have to do with Fight Club? Uh, what, what color was your mother's hair? I don't know. Brown? Go. <laughs> How's that working out for you? Fight Club? <laughs> yeah, do it better. It, it just seemed like, uh, by the way, I never chose the Fight Club monologue. Fuck you if you did. Wait, can we, can we find out your words, though? I want to know your, your seven words. Oh, I can't remember all seven. Uh, Bob, did you actually, did you, did you take Sam's kind of class where you got your I didn't, essences? But, but I got my essences from living my, my life as his best friend. But what was interesting to me is when I started out in cabaret, he said to me at one point, so who do you see yourself as? And it was in the days of Bonnie and Clyde with Warren Beatty. And I said, well, I think I'm the Warren Beatty of song. And he said, you're not. <laughs> you're not. You're the Faye Dunaway so, of song. <laughs> more the Faye Dunaway. So he said... <laughs> He said, so here's the thing. He said, you're in Godspell. You get laughs every night. Now what you have to do is start talking between numbers in this act and be who you are with your humor instead of just singing one song to the next song to the next song, which helped me discover who I was. And then once I was authentically me, I was able to attract people in record companies to be interested in me because I wasn't trying to be Warren Beatty anymore, even though in my mind I was secretly wishing I could be. We all, we all have that person that we, we target, we think like, oh, I wish I was like them, and the curious thing is that you might, by virtue of some random experience, you might actually find yourself being someone else's thing. 
and what a crime it is that that person's looking at someone who's thinking, <laughs> uh, I wish I was Bill Murray. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, like well, the, the, that person doesn't wish you that you were Bill Murray. That person may or may not know who Bill Murray is, but you're, it's like, I always wonder where you're supposed to draw those lines. Like, we have these mentors, these figures, that, oh, I, I had an epiphany while I was watching this person do stand up or perform. Like, I wish I was Gary Shandling. I wish I was uh, 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 David Foster Wallace. I wish I was this. I wish I was that. Like, what are you supposed to construct your identity out of if it's not other primates around you who have done things that you've admired? Who, it, And yet, somewhere within there, you're supposed to just be yourself. And it's the most useless advice in the world. But Sam somehow was able to like, get I, into I, that I, yoke. I, I remember like half of your essence is Dan and probably like a few of yours, Rob. But like, like when, because I took it first and, I, and then you start telling everybody, go take this class whether you're a, an actor or not. Right. Like it's really valuable no matter what you do. Mm-hmm. It, like that self-knowledge thing. And it sounds culty to talk about, but it really was, this is beautiful. That There's no way to express how much Sam means to people. Um, it was super but like, culty. When, 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 when Rob took it, like when I got my essences, Sam he tells you he's like, "There's going to be one essence that's going to be kind of an epiphany for you, that you're going to go, oh, that's how I say that." And he told me like we're, we were trying to talk about my, the neighborhood of my um, poise or my confidence. And if you don't like me, I'm arrogant. If you like me, I'm poised. If you like, like there's that thing. And he wrote down a thing and he put it on a piece of paper and slid it across the desk. He goes, "Anybody else would hate this, but I think you're going to like it." And it, it, it was the neighborhood of my confidence or cockiness or whatever. And it was not conceited, just convinced. Ooh. And I hit the fucking desk and go, exactly. I said, <laughs> I, I don't think I'm better than you. I know I'm better than you. <laughs> and like, like, I almost started crying. And I the, the one that Rob had, is my favorite one for you, Rob, last puppy at the pound. <laughs> Love it. That's great. That's not the one. I see that one. I don't. I don't. I, I I, love Rob, that Rob's one. that I remember is waiting for permission. <laughs> also, my favorite. My other favorite is Little Green Man. Yeah. <laughs> like you're, you're from yeah. outer space. Yeah. And and then the next year you dressed up as Little Green Man for Halloween. That's true. And it was the best outfit of it all is time. That's true. It was a good and one. What, what what about uh, fuck the dog but won't admit it? <laughs> He got you on that one. You're doing I this lo- again. I love that. Yeah, you're doing this. Oh, this so, so, is what and, you're and doing. So, some of Harmon's, uh, the, the overriding one for me is, and it sounds weird, but it's, it is perfect. It's mud monster on shore leave. <laughs> That's the one that I like. Yeah, that's so. Like what well, Sam would say, like some of these are your own. Like, like don't. It doesn't need to make sense to other people. It's for you to recalibrate. Right. And actually, I forgot. Like I, I refer to the last year being rough for me, and it's precisely because I forgot. It's like, like I don't. Re- it's like, uh, oh God, you're a mud monster on shore leave, which to me means your story doesn't get to be about like like. All right. Well, whatever. Um, Sam, like... Also, other ones of Dan's, um, Unspeakable Sadness, yeah. um, Came Alone and Leaving Likewise. I love that one. Uh, yeah, they were rough. <laughs> but That's not, yeah, some people, but, but, like, you don't, but, you don't but, get but, the but, essences you want, you get the, wait, <laughs> you get I, the ones ask, you need. Can I ask a question? Some of these are so poetic. The, it, you're saying they, there was a list of 300 that people would circle, so these were Those are just words. The no, words but, would be but, like but, sarcastic, but lazy. Sam, back in the day, would, would, you would get there, you would collate all this information, and you would find out, like, okay, everybody's calling you sarcastic, or sardonic, witty, I know, but like funny. Mud Monster on Shore Leave. But, but Sam would just that write... That was just Sam. Sam would just, would, would just write it down. He would make these pitches. You'd slide them across the table. <laughs> Look at that. And I'd go, oh. I got the evolution of that was like the mud monster is always welcome at the ball or something like that. It was sort of like, and I was like, yeah, but I don't, mm. I don't, I, 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 yeah, I, I suppose he is, but I, I don't. I, I would give do a, a monologue. Fuck. I, I brought a monologue in for the acting class, like after that, a whole process, and it was like this tough guy asshole, like, like, like a kind of a mean, angry monologue, and I was trying to be a tough guy, and, and he goes, okay, Jeff, that was good. Let's do it again. And you have your card up, up, up uh, your placard with all your essences on it, which is, you know, kind of r- like, you feel very exposed because you're proud of some, embarrassed by others, but they're there. 
And he goes, Jeff, why is, because one of my essences was dashing, <clears throat> pardon, dashing. It gets you choked up how dashing you are. <laughs> no, so, see, That's... Isn't, that, isn't that dashing him? <laughs> uh, and, and he goes, Jeff, why is dashing on that? I go, I don't like that one. I, I goes, why? Because somebody, someone that's dashing wouldn't say they're dashing. And he goes, do it again. <laughs> and I did it as dashing. I was just, you know, and, and it, it was way scarier. Like, like, like if you just, just like own anything. He told one guy, uh, he goes, do it again, but sit on your hands. He goes, you can't use your hands. Now do it. And it was the most terrifying thing in the world. He just had this way to bring out something by the turn of your hat or a little thing. Or like if, if it was Randy and you go, do it. Like, see the way you're tilting your head? What, like, why, why, do you, like, why do you do that? I always do. Now, now start, <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and then like it brings out the stuff. It's like he's like you, your tears. Like if, if people that think they can't cry on camera or can't cry on command, like in a, in a play or a, or a TV show or a film, it's so close to the surface. Like really, all you have to do is slightly scratch the surface and just say, "What? Why do you tilt your head? Why are you listening like that?" I always do, and there's tears that come from that. And like, he had this ability to absolutely draw humanity out of yourself that you think shouldn't be there, couldn't be there, um, you're not allowed to possess it, or it's too far away to own. Like, he just had this ability. Um, I mean, I'll fucking start crying. Uh, like, he... What, what... Uh, 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 Bob, uh, what... What do you think, like, okay, we've lost Sam. He, nobody leaves, no, nobody gets to, like, go, oh, I'm scheduled to leave a month from now. Uh, here's what I got to say. Goodbye. I'm packing my things. Like, it sounds like he left kind of weirdly peacefully. Relatively young man to, as you described it, you said he was at, he was at the home of his partner, and he, he just said, I feel faint, and he laid his head down on the table, and he... And he was gone. But um, how old was he again? 70. Which wow. I, I, I hope is the new 50, for my sake. Uh, I, I thought, I always thought I, thought, I felt like Sam was 60 when I was 25, and he looked 60 the last time I saw him a couple right. of months ago. He was, uh, anyways, but, but, but um, he, uh, for a guy that it was, he was always like, uh, he took other people's fear away. He was interested in them, no matter how much of a schmendrick they were. I, I just like, he was so non judgmental, uh, like, or at least he just gave everybody a chance to, to figure out who the fuck they were. At, now that he's gone, do you feel a door closing where you're like, oh shit, what did Sam want from me? Like, does that make sense? Like, is there something that you worry about personally that you're like, oh shit, if Sam had known he was gonna take off and I had had a chance to say to him, hey, not to be even more selfish than I was our entire relationship, but any uh, final thoughts? Cause I, I, you, like, that is, like that he might have given you some advice or well, given you a- I don't, uh, I don't feel that there were things that were unfinished between us because we were always vocal about how important we were to each other in our lives. I, he was about to start a new chapter because he had bought a house in Asheville so North Carolina in North Carolina nailed it so <laughs> so there was a part of him that was beginning this new chapter and I don't know whether that had anything to do with his passing that it was the end of one chapter and the beginning of another but I know how rewarded he was I don't I wish I could have said goodbye to him but I don't feel like there was anything unfinished between us we were always very vocal about each other, each other's lives, what was ahead of us as far as projects and dreams. And you guys got together and you watched Bill Maher, and, and Sam was always very, you know, he, he made no secrets about his politics, and yet his politics were sort of like, he wasn't like, to me, he wasn't like a militant liberal, like, oh my God, we have to do something, but at the same time, he was absolutely unapologetic about... And incredibly this world is well fucked up. The situation is politics. fucked up. So he's watching Bill Maher. He's obviously he's able to put up with Bill Maher's personality. Right. Um, <laughs> that means that you guys sat week after week and you talked about his view of the world. We did. And so I guess that's uh, the related question: is did 
it's it, I don't want to be as corny as to say if Sam were here right now, what would he say to us, knowing that he gets one last thing to say to us? But I guess that's what, I don't know something in that area. Like Sam had an opinion about the world and the way it was going and stuff. Like I would he give it like it, we're like, hey Sam. Uh, what should we remember to do now that you're gone and you're never going to remember remind us to do it again? Like, uh, I put that upon you. It's really dumb. Bad well, he, podcast w- w- one of the things that he wanted was for Trump and Pence to both be taken down and have Nancy Pelosi be president. Oh, okay. That's I mean, simple he, enough. He just, <laughs> right, we can get to the nuts and bolts of that. Yeah. You know, he just felt like, <laughs> let somebody who knows what the fuck they're doing be in there. It'd be funny because he's like Santa Claus. Like, Santa, what do you want from the world? <laughs> I want Nancy Pelosi to be president. Uh, no, make no mistake. I've got really specific. <laughs> ho, 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 ho. I need the 23rd district to flip and <laughs> and he, he, he <laughs> and he was predicting everything. Like he said, um, uh, I think what's going to happen is that uh, they're going to bring down Donald Trump Jr. and Jared and go to Trump and say, listen, this is what we're going to do. You better resign or this is going to happen. I had that prediction, too, as of the Roger Stone indictment, too, that it actually comes down to Donald Jr., that it's not going to touch Trump at all. Right. I don't think that it's going to... I I have that premonition. I've been reading, like, the experts kind of, like, uh, speculation about this. I believe it actually... Like, I do actually believe, as controversial as this may seem, that Donald Trump had no capacity to actually do anything but blunder his way into accidental treason. Um, <laughs> and, like, he ne- like, he never was like, I get a great idea about, like, how to, like, be Dr. No. I think he totally thought he was just like, I'm winning, I'm, I'm, I know how to win. And I think his son, who is half as smart somehow... Uh, <laughs> What's, ha- uh, what's half of zero? Went way too far and like took meetings and left a paper trail and, <laughs> and it's going to come to him. Right. But uh, happy birthday, Sam. Uh, we're talking about uh, this. But, 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 but that, that it's, I don't, but I don't see it coming to, it's, that's, that's the weird telenovela that I, I don't, how is that going to work? They're going to go, hey, we're locking your son away. And then he's going to go, that's all right. I'm going to pardon him. And everyone's going to go, yay. They're like, Pardon him later. <laughs> so long, son. I'm proud of you. Like, like, how does the pardoning work? Like, you can't do it until later, right? So, like, his right. the people are gonna watch him s- watch his son go to prison. Right. That's my prediction, and right. it's gonna it's gonna finally find the funny right. bone of this dead corpse of an empire <laughs> like everyone's gonna go what, what that's th- fucking weird what do you think uh you're just watching your son go to prison like <laughs> no wall no mexican is that important I, I, I can't fucking like believe what you're doing what do you think sam uh would uh, essences for a trump would be <laughs> What are Trump's essences? Like I, I, I search out all the time. Like, 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 well, it would just be like, 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 like. I, he kind of, he kind of spouts them out. I mean, I think like, 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 if you were, you could be a fan of his by going like, yeah, he said, he, he, he would be his, his essences would be like, I'm big, very big, or like it would be like, like toy truck language, like, like, like my truck big. <laughs> And it would be exactly why, when you love them, you love them. If you love them, he'd be like, "My truck big. Like I, I get more candy. Like it would be, uh, I, I deserve all the candy." candy. Or, uh, uh, or hemorrhoidal. <laughs> hemorrhoidal. I mean, a little bit with a little touch of, out of seven essences. Like two of them would be like they would evoke pain. Like 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 how come Obama made me hooked on opiates or something? Like, I have this kind of like thumb sucky, like why is everybody picking on me? Like just a hint of that. But yeah. most of it would be like, like, like me, me, no share me candy. <laughs> like, like, and, 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 and it would be like, like, yeah, that's it's about time someone said that because if, that, if, if, if okay, because I'm a now, fucking idiot. Now do me. Like you? No, I'm not doing that. That wasn't a Trump. Uh, no, I'm saying your now essences, as yeah. far as I can tell, are tiny. Uh, bean. Uh, I love handsome people. <laughs> uh, uh, I, 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 I'm sorry. We're listening to this podcast uh, on my phone. I will continue to hit snooze every ten minutes. 
so that you'll never find out who, what the sentence was because you just uh, you burned right. me. Right. Damn, that's, that's good. <laughs> that's, that's like we're listening to the podcast. And it's like, like, come on, it was nine snoozes ago. No, Get I up. only did it twice this morning. Come on, All right. you're being. Yeah. I'm projecting a lot of shame about yeah. my snoozing. <laughs> um, I don't know. Don't put me on the spot. Sorry. All right. What, what were what were your other ones, Rob? I don't remember the other. Those are the only three I remember. Really. Yeah, I don't remember them. I always forget. But the first, those, those top three were, I mean, well. Last like, Puppy at the Pound. Last Puppy at the Pound is. Little puppy, Green Man. Yeah. And those two were the big ones. What do you think, Sam? Think, like, what, what, Sam's here. Sam's watching. Sam, now, then he goes away after this show as far as this being on stage. Like, when do you, can you think of anything Sam would like to see us do as an exercise or anything to. I think you'd like him. us all to have nipple rings that you can see through. His, <laughs> that you can see through his t-shirt. He looked like Santa Claus, but then if he he would wear it, he was like fucking ripped, like like in this like da- bear daddy way. That like is he had so a big hot. I think you should get chest. nipple rings. And oh and, my god, I can and, see. And this. he would wear like polo shirts, and he had this like kind of painted on, beautiful white beard, razor sharp and, beard, and, yeah. and he'd be like. I want to tell you how you need to activate yourself and what you can be honest with yourself. And then you'd like, if you squinted, you'd be like, this guy's got two pierced nipples. <laughs> <laughs> underneath, underneath his incredibly Wait. tasteful polo. Rock on, baby. What, what year was your birthday that we roasted you and Sam was there? Uh, 30th. 30th. Is it for Dan's 30th birthday. We have it, I think we have it on video somewhere, right? Oh, that'd be uh, great. I we, can't wait for that to surface. Yeah. Can I do more than quit Twitter? <laughs> By the way, wait, I quit Twitter, and then they fucking... All right. We, we, we roasted Dan. <laughs> the and, timeline. And, and I said, when Sam was dating Ken Cortland, uh, uh, who's the best also, and um, what, one of uh, Ken's essences was predatory. <laughs> yeah, he was. Yeah, and when he, when, when, he, I, when he said, he goes, I'm predatory. <laughs> and he's like, oh, shit, I'm, I'm in danger right now. Um, we, I, I roasted Sam, and I, one of my jokes was... Uh, well, one of yours was, was Sam uh, gave me my start. Sam is so old uh, that you know I, he he gave me my start. This is your joke, like, and, and it, it's nice to think that he, um, he, the guy that gave me my start also uh, invented fire. Yeah, well, <laughs> you, all right. <laughs> <laughs> I, so, I, think yeah. I think it's. I think it's. I don't. I was like things feel like Sam. Kind of in a certain sense, he discovered me, yeah, yeah, which right. is very flattering because he also discovered fire. That's, <laughs> it's just. A, it's just. A, it was a roast joke. And it wasn't worth repeating. But to fuck it up like that is. And that and that poop scarf story. I mean, you went out of your way, like you. I truthfully, with the way I heard the story, you were a hero. You made yourself a villain. It was so because it was like I think it's you're like I was like aware, self aware, thinking about how the so story was just would like come I looked at the so... scarf and I was like, hey, why the fuck did I ever have to take any shit? I'm gonna take this shit and fucking pawn it off on a. I, you, I, 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 when I heard the story over brunch, I was like, "Holy shit!" It was just like we went through it. She took you took a shit on the scarf, and then you took it back. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. I'm not giving. I'm, I'm not giving you notes. I, yeah, yeah. yeah, you are. No, I, 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 I I'm bad. I'm, I'm bad. Shy. I'm shy. Oh, I, I, I think. I, but, but, uh, no, mom, but, you're doing. You're doing a great job. You're doing a I great job. I, th- th- thank you for. I'm. I'm so happy. Give it up for the, Randy Heller, everybody. Come on. Yeah. Mama uh, no, in the house. Randy, Sam, uh, hang on. Uh, I, I have a good story to, to share about about Randy. Actually, that uh, I think it will it will make up for any does, character. Does Sam drive through it? And... Um, I feel like he would because I feel like okay, one good. of my words is that. All right. Okay, so my, one of the words I would say that I am is the the game that my mom used to play with me, which is called Wild Fish. And um, basically, I would spend a lot of time in the bathtub, which. Side note, it was because I we had a jacuzzi tub and I had just dis- discovered masturbating because you could you know sit up on the thing and I had this book called Where Did I Come From, which was an illustrated book explaining sex to kids, which happened to I mean it was hot. It was like you could you could spend time on it. So anyway, it was like page what? Where did I come from? Page two, a pussy. <laughs> page three, and you've got one. Page four, <laughs> check it out. No, 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 no. <laughs> No, 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 no. It's a romantic. It's a romantic tale about a mom and a dad, and 
they're like kind of a heavy set couple. Like they're just like a normal. Like the dad is balding. It's a very realistic portrayal. This of is just, how I hit the jackpot. You do look a lot like the dad in Where Did I Come From. I don't know whether to feel good or bad about this. Um, like I no, just Manchurian you. No, into he's a, hot. He's hot. Uh. He's hot. But it, it explained, you know, when a mom and a dad or a man and a woman meet and are in love. I mean, this was before you had. You know, this was just heteronormative like eighties stuff but it was still pretty hot but they're like mom and a dad <laughs> they want to get so close to each other because they love each other so much so like when they hug each other the penis of the dad goes inside of the vagina of the mom and then it when it feels really good it's like um it feels like a big build-up and then a release like a sneeze <laughs> and somehow this is just a side note by the way about the wild fish story sorry this had nothing to do with wild right. fish but as a as a weird thing because i read that and absorbed it into my brain now, when I get turned on, sometimes I sneeze. And it's because in my brain, it got programmed in weird from that book. But anyway, so I love taking these baths. And then my mom would be like, and this, the wild fish existed before I was like aware of my sexuality. Right. But anyway. This guy, like, hey, let me book in this. I promise it'll be helpful. Because okay. like our couple's therapist was like, hey, oh, yeah. let me just ask you guys something, me and Cody. She's like, why don't you guys describe the, uh, how, what was it like? Did you guys take baths when you were a kid? Uh, what was that like? And then Cody, uh, go ahead. Now explain what yeah. would happen. So when you I, I love taking baths, and even before like the book and all that, I just love being in the bath and pretending, you know, just playing and going on in, in the bath forever. So to get me to lure me out of the bath, my mom would be like, "Okay, we're gonna time to play wild fish," and she would get out the big like duvet cover from the from the bed, the whole thing, the comforter from the bed. And she would, I would get out of the bath, she would wrap me in a towel, and like two towels, one on my head, one on my body, and then she would wrap me up in the comforter in like a big dumpling. She would like wrap all of me up in there, and she would drag me around the house, with, uh, like in this thing, over the hardwood floors, and she would do the voices of like, basically the premise was that I was a wild fish, she was an activist who like was saving me from the zoo. <laughs> We were like going through the zoo and she would do the different voices like a security guard would come and be like, ma'am, I'm going to have to see what's, what's in the bag there. And she'd be like, oh, nothing, officer. This is, no, this is not, it's just certainly not a wild fish. No. And then she would like, and, and it was the most fun ever. And yeah, it makes me want to have a kid to play wild fish with them. It was really magical. And but Dan, Dan. And I would go, uh, I, I remember the water getting very cold. <laughs> and eventually going, hello! <laughs> My brother and I uh, would take, when we were, when we were real, real little, we would take baths together, and we, we had a game called Pee Pee Monster. <laughs> and somebody would pee in the bathtub, but you had to... You, you had to stand up on the edge of the bathtub and try to knock, knock the other brother into the pee. <laughs> because the pee was a monster. Because, and also because pee, the pee, like, like you're saying, like, oh, well, the pee, once the pee was in the tub, like, yeah. you got up on the ledge? Yeah, yeah so oh, okay. you're, 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 you're skirting the edges of it. No. Why did you have to avoid it because it was a monster? It's already pee. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Why was the game called Pee Pee Monster? You could have said, stop at the first pee. Yeah. The one Look, thing... I peed in the tub. I don't want to touch it. <laughs> but is it That's a monster? A really good okay, question. Now I really don't want to touch yeah. it. It's that is piss. A... Yeah. You what peed the in a fuck? pool. What the fuck? Gross. Really gross. Really gross. Congratulations. <laughs> you and your brother, gross. <laughs> Just gross. Sweet. I once took a shit in the tub. <laughs> Remember when Sloan was in there with me and she freaked out? My sister, we were taking a bath together and I, I mean, I was young. Did she I, think it was a shark? I mean, I don't remember, but she freaked out, right? She was like, yeah, she wasn't not. She's like, I'm done it, now. Yeah. She's 13, I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, uh, uh, Randy saved my life, you know. Tell it. Okay. <laughs> Sounds so like content. We were, we were walking, and Sam was hysterical at this story. Everybody is, I hope. So we were walking out of a grocery store, and this car comes zooming 
through the parking lot. And Randy pulled me back and she started screaming at this woman in the car. She said, what's wrong with you? You almost killed my friend. And in the car was this very heavy set African-American woman with nine children. And she looks at us and she goes, didn't you see me not looking? <laughs> <laughs> All right. That... <laughs> and I'm going to get well, some well... emails about that one. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God we don't check Dear our emails. Dear Reddit, I have an issue <laughs> with H-Towns. That reminded me, I remember briefly, like, you, and it, you, you can say, no, I don't want to tell that story. There was like a story that you were like, you, about Bruce Willis slapping you. Yeah. Like uh, you, you, like okay, that, that's the whole story, really. <laughs> that's the whole story, right? Well, but Into no, but it mic. wasn't like, like it was like he was like leaning in the car on Sunset Boulevard or whatever. And he's like, "Hey, what's going on? Where's the party?" And you're like, "It was like the '80s," and you were like, "I don't know, Bruce Willis. What are you?" And then he like slapped me across the face. Uh, what do you do that he for? I think he was talking to the microphone. Uh, he was very high. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll uh, let's call that the gossip section, so that nobody like uh, I just okay, I forgot the world we're living in. I, yeah. I thought like so uh, Bruce so Willis he, called out for Bruce, slapping. Sorry, was it okay? Back up. I have a few questions. So was it like a Pulp Fiction Ving Rhames situation where you're Bruce Willis and Bruce Willis is Ving Rhames? Like you you stop and and Bruce Willis sticks his head in the car and just like, hey, you know, welcome to California. <laughs> I'm Bruce Willis. Yeah, You're cool like, I know yeah. who you are. And then yeah, he just slapped exactly you and went, like that. Yeah. check it out. <laughs> <laughs> Watch Moonlighting and get the fuck out what of there. What made you think of that? <laughs> He gave me a bitch slap. And you, you know? were like, okay, well, that just happened. <laughs> yep. uh, or were you like, 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 was shocked. it, it was, was did it bum you out? It, like you were. No, it was just shocking. Wait, wait, like, what, 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 what did I do? I was just sitting there. What, what, <laughs> he was just, what, what was his, what, why did he slap you? Like what, what precipitated that? And nothing at all? Or just, he's just being Bruce Willis? I don't, I, I don't know. Maybe it's something to do with me returning a poop scarf or something. I don't know. No, no, I don't know. I, yeah, he was coming on oh, to me. It was a playful, oh, exactly. he, 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 he was, okay. what, the, what the kids Buried call, the he was negging you. He was negging you. Like, yeah. like it was like, oh, if I yeah, mistreat like, you know, her, where you she'll going, go like, well, you know, what's he and selling? I'm going, I was yeah. married, and I, you right. know, and I went, you no. They I call, they, they, they used but to, if they, you weren't married, would you have... If I what? If you were not married, would you have, had you know? Tilting. Probably. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. That. I don't, that's such a random thing for my past. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I, 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 I would, I, I would, if I wasn't married, I would, I would fuck Bruce Willis. Oh, well, look, he's here, he's here, he's here. Oh, oh, oh shit, yeah, Bruce, Bruce Willis is here, hey, everybody. Bruce Willis, Bruce Willis. Hey. Whoa, oh, he's we, slapping we, we everybody. Got Bruce Willis. We got Bruce. Oh, God. Oh, he's slapping everybody. Uh, hey, Bruce, wait, what are you doing? Bruce, wait, come on, take it easy. Bruce, it's a new segment. What are you doing, Bruce? Okay, go for it. No, be Bruce. Mm. Be Bruce. That's all I got. And oh. then he went to the next car. <laughs> I was trying to build it out into a thing well, where like, you're hey, like uh, Daniel hey, Tiger on Mr. Rogers hey. or something. Yeah. Let, 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 let's, Bruce, what time is it? What's let, the... Let's reenact. Let's reenact the scenario. So, so Randy, you're you're driving your car. Bruce Willis comes up. I was up. in the passenger seat. We right. pulled up to in front of. The wait. Room. Well, first of all, well, eat oh, the wait, mic. Wait, wait. I, I'm so and, bad about and this. And second of all, vocalize what you're doing. Like, like, like. I wasn't driving. Like, I don't mean to feed you lines, but like, you'd be like, "Hey, it's me, Mama Larusso. I'm on <laughs> Hollywood Boulevard." <laughs> Like, like, like I'm not thing, even like sure if I had done that already. I don't think I did. Well, this is then, pre then, then, then Fix it. Rewrite pre, it. No, we just pulled up, my friend and I, to the improv. It's Karen Brooks. You know my Karen best Brooks, friend, Karen Shapiro. Yeah. You were going to the improv to see... No, we, I don't know why we were pulling up in front of the improv. He came out that's from where the, the improv. He came by, and he put his head down in the car, and he goes, where are you girls going? <laughs> and I said... <laughs> And first I said, shit, that's Bruce Willis. Uh, and wait, then, which you knew him from what? Moonlighting? What? Probably. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, we're going like, back here. Fuck? We're going really far back. <laughs> and I just said, you know, we're not going anywhere. I don't know what I said. Yeah, then, where then where are you going? going? He was just improv? put his hand in the car and slapped me across the face. What the fuck? Was it playful, though? It was you were pulling into. Wait, it seems like you liked it. Why are they it kind of seems like me? <laughs> you were. You was were, it playful? <laughs> why didn't you report it? What? Tell me what why didn't happened. You report it, it was in before the days of me. Okay, too. but yeah. was it playful or was it really <laughs> hard? Like, did I think it, did he it was leave pissed his... off because I rejected right. him. He was pissed off. I would have slapped you. <laughs> <laughs> Learn to take a compliment. 
Uh, he, he, he once, I, I think I, I might have mentioned this on the show before, he once knocked me over at, at a bar because <laughs> I, I was with a girl that looked a little too much like Demi Moore. Yeah, there you and, go. And, and, and he jumped over a thing and just fucking, like, he like hockey checked me like up against the boards and I almost went to the ground. He absolutely nailed me. And it wasn't because he was trying to. He just he, he saw a girl he wanted to talk to, and I was in the way. He was right. Yeah, exactly. And, and he what completely would, just fucking sh- shoulder checked me. And he's like, what would be a Sam um, essence for Bruce Willis? Douchebag. Oh, come on, <laughs> knock it off. Like, like uh, the well, poor guy. It was just uh, his only crime is being so visible. Wait, that... why? I think it's cool. It's such a cool thing that I like to hear. Like the way that he. No, would... but I'm saying, I'm saying, I'm saying, like, oh, what would he be? Says like douchebag. Oh, he's an asshole. Like, like, I, I, yippee like, kaye, mommy issues. <laughs> <laughs> I I really like Hudson Hawk. I I like <laughs> Hudson Hawk. I you, like uh, that you're, movie. You're, you're the one. Uh, uh, what would his essences be? Like, hey. Uh, Hey, uh, Calif- fucking all, California. I, I, all things considered, I'd rather be in Philadelphia. <laughs> I, 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 like, like his 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 essences would be in his a lot along the lines of some of the things. Uh, he'd be like, "Hey, oh, uh, what 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 are you doing over here? Uh, it's me, Bruce Willis. That's not an essence. Uh, oh, uh, well, look, 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 what's going on over here?" Uh, uh, I'm trying to. I'm coming up with it. Uh, yeah, yeah. Bruce Willis's yeah. essence. Uh, oh, uh, hey. Uh, <laughs> uh, Sam, Sam Christensen is turning in his grave right now. I right? see. Dead well, no, people. Sam. Sam's like, you I can do it, Dan. People. You can do it. All right. <laughs> I'm gonna come up with it. I'm gonna Bruce. This is Bruce Willis's <laughs> top essence. Uh, hey. Uh, <laughs> you're gonna put. You you, 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 you you put a plant in a pot. You get a potted plant. It's pretty good. Pretty good. Tell me I'm fucking wrong. <laughs> you put a pot in a plant, you get a potted plant. What, what, what essence is that, though? That's Bruce Willis's essence. What, are you ta- what do you mean, what essence is that? Like, what, what, what are you describing about him? By... You put, hey, ooh, you put a pot in a plant. A, pl- a plant in a pot, sorry, I fucked it up. You put a plant. It's about it's 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 for him. It's not for you. It's how he it's how he centers himself before an audition. Which he doesn't have to do anymore because he fucking figured it out. Sorry, he slapped you. That's not cool. <laughs> people shouldn't slap people. But in the seventies, in the eighties, everyone I'm was confused. slapping everybody. A, a lot of people were drugged. Yeah, he, I mean, know, there were nine like, people in the world, and he was one of them. Right. So it's like, what do I do? He's <laughs> he a, one drugged, of the nine man. people he slapped said, me. He was what angry. To do? This, is, this is the problem I have with this story. So you're pulling into the improv. Oh my god! Just listen to me. Listen to me. You're pulling into the improv. I'm going to slap and you. And then minute. Bruce Willis <laughs> says, hey, where are you going? You're pulling into the improv. <laughs> yeah. Was he wearing a vest? Did he have flashlights? Hey, where are you going? Maybe, I mean, there's a sign. Because if the, the answer is the improv, uh, you get validated. You're pulling into the I improv. I think what it meant is that hey, where, where are you going? going? Like, hey, where are you going? We're not going anywhere. Where you you know? See, that we part of the story tripped like, me up, too. I'm yeah, I, I, I know you are, but I'm saying, he was probably saying, like, hey, what are you girls doing? Okay, okay. I, I know what, I know what know. his technique was, because it, because it was the improv. Okay, you be Cody's mom. Um, I'll be Bruce Willis. Okay. Okay. So, uh, hey, where are you going? <laughs> oh, it's a. Uh, the, that, for, uh, what? For, for, for the listeners, for our listeners, that was Rob rolling down a window. Um, cast, your, cast your minds back into the foggy mist a, of time. A, a Jimmy Carter era window. <laughs> yeah. got See down. how long the <laughs> crank was? Joke yeah. of the night. The Be- radius. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because apparently she was. She was in a, a Oldsmobile Cutlass Supreme. <laughs> she was also the size of a mouse. Uh, <laughs> All right, sorry, sorry. Hey, hey where, 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 where are you going? Ah, uh, we just got here. We're going nowhere. Yeah, but where are you going? <laughs> the, the improv. Hey, you like improv? <laughs> yeah, we. So you can't. You can't here. deny. You can't ask questions. Nope. Just suck my dick. <laughs> Yes, and <laughs> what? Oh, she's rolling up the window. I, I'm just saying, like he. You he... can go fuck your <laughs> I was, My point was, what the in the fuck? All right, tonight's show's all right. 
that he picked that spot because it was like a thing. Like he's like, "Where are you going?" Your answer is supposed to be, "I'm going to the improv," and he's like, "Hey, you weren't going into the improv. You wanna, if you want to improvise, where you fuck Bruce going? Willis. Where were you going? That's what I asked before. <laughs> well, I don't know. I don't remember. Well, so maybe you are going to the improv. No, we weren't. She's going to the Laugh Factory. Where were we going? I, How don't, did the I don't remember. I'm just, you know what? We may not have been in the front of the improv. Oh, my God. I, now that I, I think about it, it I'm was just Roscoe's saying it was waffles. somewhere where we were pulled up or something. I don't know. I don't remember. <laughs> the story, the story's falling yeah. apart. Yeah. Right? This was not even Bruce Willis. We probably Willis pulled up to Bruce Willis's house. house. <laughs> we probably pulled, I pulled up, up to Bruce, Bruce Willis's house. house. I'm going to call... <laughs> <laughs> He's, you were trespassing. You were, you, were, you were stealing his diehard gargoyles. <laughs> hey, what are you doing? Where I, are you I, going? I had those built because I'm proud of being a diehard. You're like, I don't fucking know. <laughs> And he's, he is like he tried to grab him and he slapped you. <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? I get I get two things I like: my gargoyles and my diehard mailbox. Now the truth comes out. Yeah. Uh, all right, Mama Larusso, the character. Let's dig in. Dig in. Is she Italian or Jewish? Yeah. <laughs> You gotta f- eat the mic. You oh gotta... yeah, yeah. The name Larusso. Di- the Larusso family. They were Italian. They were Italian. They're Italian. They're Italian. New Jersey and Italian. Like, Where were they from? Yeah. Reseda. What is she? she no, says no, to no. New Jersey. 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 Yeah. And they're in Reseda, California. Well, they were visiting. They were coming. Not visiting. They were moving to Los Angeles. So, talk and they about... pull up in Reseda to a place that they were going to live. Tell me about Elizabeth Shue. Cute, young. She was like 18. She first was 18, job. really? How old was uh, uh, Ralph Macchio? Ralph was about 22. What? No shit. Wait, no that way. That's so fucking He weird. looked like a 14 year old. Hollywood lied! <laughs> <laughs> that is so. I mean, first of all, to props to Macchio, we're not, I'm not, we're not age shaming him. Like, like, good for, it's like, I would have assumed absolutely the opposite. No shame to Elizabeth, because when you watch that movie through nowadays' eyes, you're like, Oh Jesus Christ! Like there were so few people in the world that we always had to cast like adults as teenagers, right. and Elizabeth right. Shue she is like a babe. She gorgeous, just had, but very yeah. she very much feels like right. she's uh, his mom, right. like like not. Well, she was uh, very mature. She feels like and a grown he was very. Woman. He looked like his hormones had and been he's kicked very in. Very convincingly, right. like fourteen. Right. He, was 20, he was twenty. He was twenty-two. He was sixteen. Uh, oh, I mean, oh. twenty-two playing sixteen. Wow. And she and was when I 18. got when I got hired. You know, I had to audition with him, and I walked out, and I said, God, I'm only 36, and he's 22, <laughs> yeah. you know, because yeah. he looked so young. He and, did. And oh, did you feel like, like, yeah, that's it. Yeah. So, like, you get the call, or your agent goes, like, got a part, the the name of the part is Mama LaRusso. <laughs> 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 did, was, there, was there ever, as a female actor, did you have to go through... I've, I've dated an actor or two here and there oh, really? and experienced some uh, oh. existential crises. <laughs> uh, like where the, the, the actor goes, what the fuck? And they're like, why am I getting... Why is my agent telling me to audition for this soccer mom when and this Ford mom, commercial? Like, is there, oh, 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 did you, oh. Was there, a, was there a line where you... No, I was just happy to work. I, you know, I came to L.A. and I, that was one of my first jobs. But you weren't... So I you wasn't weren't, even thinking about it. It was just that he, was, he looked so young. And when I found out he was 22 also, and I was only 36... I think, 36. I mean, it's, in the script, I don't think it was Mama LaRusso. No. <laughs> I, I just want to, like... What, what, I feel what, like what, what was the character's first I, name? I, I when forget. I read it, I thought it was, like, a, such a little gem, even when I first read it. You I recognized remember, that it was a satisfying... Oh, I didn't think it was going to become like it did, but I said, wow, that's a beautiful story, you know, and a great part for it. An Asian man, Pat, you know, Pat, Pat, Marita. Pat, Marita, Pat Marita. Pat Marita was only 17 in that. <laughs> <laughs> this is super... I did this podcast with Whiting Wags with Jessica Gow. Like, we just... Like, it's weird. Like, millennials don't... It, 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 Pat Marita won a... Did he win an Oscar for that movie? No, but he was nominated. He was nominated. Yeah. Like, try to imagine a world where Pat Marita, who speaks like you and I, he was... He, Not anymore. He was... He was well, not anymore because no, he's no. to see. That's right. a ghoulish. Uh... <laughs> you said I was like the devil. So, <laughs> <laughs> what about it? The, the he's like he has a like, and then he's playing this guy. He's cast for the shape of his face, for his lineage or whatever, and he's like our confusing relationship with whitewashing and all this stuff, and like 
Pat Morita was nominated for an Oscar because he played a Japanese uh, national immigrant, uh, and he talked like this, oh, Daniel son, oh God, and and in the in the midst of talking like this, uh, which is one uh, genealogy branch from being Mickey Rourke in Breakfast at Tiffany's, right. but he's Japanese, so he's Asian, so Mickey it's Rooney. Mickey Rooney. What did I say? <laughs> Mickey Rourke. <laughs> That would have been I, good. I, I, I think Fact I, check. I do that every Fact time. Fact check. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> the, 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 like now, it's, it's a modern lens. It's like, well, what are you doing? Are you not supposed to do that? But Do you but, think it was like, racist? I don't, well, I don't, I'm 46, so I don't, I was socialized not to, but like through a modern lens, you're, you're, you're supposed to go, oh, this is everything that's wrong with everything because it's like, well, I, 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 it's, it's very, very confusing when it comes to casting. Mm. Like this idea of, Oh, why did you cast this white person as this blah 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 when you could have cast this person? Like it's your brain kind of understands it to a certain point, but uh, it gets a little confusing between generations because there was I remember at that time there was absolutely there was there was no question of whether or not Pat Morita uh, was very deserving of accolades for being on screen going, oh, Daniel-san, uh, you should do karate more better. Oh, uh, you do it this way instead of that way. And then, th uh, and I'm, I'm not knocking his, that, because the whole point is he, f he acted the shit out of it. He right. was doing a thick, weird accent. He was a stereotype. Right. And it was, it put you in the shoes of this kid who's like the weird handyman is like, hey, what's so a what do you well in Brooklyn? I don't know what nothing about nothing. Hey, <laughs> hey we from back in Jersey, all I do was do this. And he's like, oh, Daniel son, yeah, you fix a sink, but you know, fix a soul. <laughs> and, and, and it's like, like the whole thing really had this funny. like chemistry to it. It was like very charismatic. And I don't know. Why am I bringing this up? I don't know. No fucking idea. <laughs> Pat Morita's dead now. Pat Morita was nominated for an Oscar for that. Like I, I, I don't know. I guess one of the ish, one, one of the things it brings <laughs> up is that uh, they did they re they redid the Karate Kid. They did the series, and you were on that series. Like, it's on now. Yeah. I, I haven't I haven't seen that. But w what's the what's the deal with the Karate Kid series? Like, d isn't <laughs> Ra Ralph Macchio's in it? Mm -hmm. But he's not ex he's not like the good guy, right? He's, well, they're fifty six years old now. He's kind of like. It, isn't the series about kind of how he's sort of, is he straight a little bit in terms of values? He's not like a heroic innocent. He's a karate kid, so now he's like drunk on power and doing coke, and I hear he, be <laughs> he beats a few women in it. And he's like, I'm that waxing like, you on, I'm you waxing what? you on. That's a great series. No. No. But the Cobra Kai are like sympathetic or whatever. <laughs> No, no, no. It's no? Uh, okay. they're, they're, right. they're grown now, the two men, you know, Lawrence, uh, who, what's the, the, main the, dude, the, the main dude, blonde, the blonde guy, what's the blonde his name? Dude. Bill, Billy Zapka, but what's yeah. the character? Oh, Johnny, right? Do you watch it? Yeah. Who is that? Is that oh, my that's husband? Your, th that's your husband. Oh, that's my husband. <laughs> Bobbles in the I, hizzy. I had the same reaction. I'm like, whoa, big karate kid, but it's your husband. I can't remember. He read I, the I call sheet. I can't remember anybody's name. <laughs> <laughs> Billy Zapkin. <laughs> Thank you. No, they're rivals again. I had to run all his lines. <laughs> his it's favorite actually... color's green. For God's sakes, get your shit together. <laughs> you put me through hell. <laughs> That's called Cobra Kai. Is everybody watching it? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. It's not on YouTube, right? Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Not like, doing uh -oh. so well. I, it's the, doing the, really well. The good news but is that know, response you know. means a Eight million people are watching it. Like, yeah, there's no, so much TV, right. it's just there's Aerosol so missed TV. it. It doesn't yeah. matter. Yeah. Hey, anybody no, watching uh, 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 Green River? No. See? Yeah. It's a million people watching it. I, <laughs> and, and that's a show I made up. <laughs> no, they're rivals again, and they're grown up now. And uh, Billy Zapta's character has a dojo. And Oh, it's so hard to explain. <laughs> it doesn't, you don't have to. But they're I, rivals now again. Not going to watch it. Yeah, Sounds, they're, they're, yeah, yeah, they're, they're, we've yeah. reached the point but of the show really, where it's, I'm so it's drunk. It's a great... They, they actually did a great job bringing it into today's world. Does Ralph right, slap you across the face? Yes. <laughs> no, no it's, it, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's good. I think it's good, yeah. All right, give us some John Hamm stories. You were, uh, you were on Mad Men. Like, what, what does his dick look like? <laughs> I heard it's very large. John, I hope he's not listening to this. Uh, he probably no, is, but you know what? <laughs> I 
Big I deal. I don't know oh, about it. Oh, John, sorry. We're no spreading idea. the rumor about your big giant dick yeah, again. He... But here's a thousand dick-shaped violins He's... playing for his giant dick. No, because everyone knows about it because there were pictures and stuff. He's tell knows. the wig story. Oh, you tell it. Oh. Tell it. So, He's a good at this. So Randy's having a four-hour makeup done to age her. And the makeup lady says to her, maybe I'm making up half this, but it's fine. So, uh, so the makeup says, I heard Matthew Weiner say. No, it's wrong already. Oh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> no, so my character has this big wig and aging, you know, they aged me up. And um, there was a scene where I was wearing the wig. And I had to, oh, I tilted it. Oh, this is going to be terrible. I'm telling it already. I tell it better. So yeah, it's cancel, tell it, cancel. Tell it, tell it, tell it. Tell it. Cancel. So the wig cancel. person says, I heard Matthew Weiner said it might be funny if you adjusted your wig in the scene. So she said, oh, well, I think I'll do that then. So she gets to the first take, and she adjusts the wig. And then they do the second take, and she adjusts the wig. And, and she says to John, John, too much? He said, first take, yes. Yeah. Second take, no. <laughs> that, was, that was what happened. See? Uh, <laughs> I don't really have any John Hamm stories. It was no, great I, I, to I, I, work I, I, on that show. I had a great time. He's a good guy. He's a huge dick. And he's beautiful. And he has a big, a dick. big dick. No, I don't know. It's, it, no. In my experience, it's big, but it's weird. Yeah. Oh, really? It's a big, weird dick. Yeah, it, it, it's shaped like an amp. Like a ham? Down. Like a ham, man? <laughs> Like it's Liam Neeson. Like a ham he has an, he has an ampersand it, it, it's dick. We're going like down the hill here. His dick is like a treble clef. Yeah. It's yeah. fucking, it's very, it's very curvilinear. And honestly, John Hamm, if you're listening, or if any of your representatives are, come on the show. Clear your name. That's right. <laughs> I challenge John Hamm to come on the show. Show us your dick. Show us your dick. I, 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 Take I, out a little bit to win. Let's, yes. get, let's get Bruce Willis and John Hamm, and we'll have Bruce slap John Hamm's dick. <laughs> Uh, I still don't know. What, Such look, an exciting see, career. I feel like Sam. Sam is watching. He's still like, you guys didn't do it yet. <laughs> you didn't do that thing that I need you to see, do. See, I didn't so go to I his can... class. I should have gone. I should have gone. He to needs his us class. to be true to ourselves. Sam wants me. Sam was always like, like I feel like when I was when I went to Sam's class, the thing that Sam was always suggesting to me that I wish that he wasn't gone so that I could like I feel like I was incomplete like, like 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 Sam was always saying to me okay Dan but uh why don't you do that but like uh what if you weren't allowed to scream like 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 I because I, I would I, I I thought not being a very good actor like I was when I learned how to yell I was like ooh this is great acting ah, you're telling me speak the speech I pray you tripping like a tech like like oh I'm yelling and then Sam's thing was always like, okay, Dan, but like, what if you were afraid to do that? What if you had to sit on your rage? How would that manifest itself? And I was never able to do that. All of my stuff was like, like how wounded I was and how, how you know, uh, how dishonestly that would manifest itself. And I never got to, uh, uh, I don't know, yeah. I don't know, my memories of Sam, they, they, they're incomplete because they make me go, uh, Sam, give me more attention. Tell me, tell me I did something. Tell me, I always, I, I, I weirdly pictured Sam when I was 70 that Sam would still be, I never thought about him as having an age or a mortality. I right. thought he'd be like hanging out and he'd be like, you did it. Good yeah. job. You're 70. You, you did a great job in that, in that at that eulogy or like like you you did it i was watching you on that like he, he, th there's there's so many things that he said like 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 just with one line like with one like little statement that like completely transformed the way i thought about things and he told me I, I, one thing that I'll, <clears throat> I'll never forget is he said jeff he goes you make it all too hard he goes you think you 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 overthink it you're making it harder than it is and he goes just do it like, just say the words. He goes, you have tricks that you use. He goes, don't use them. Like, just, just say the words. He goes, do it again and just say it. And then all the emotion comes out when you're not lying and you're not pretending. Like, he, he just had a way of, like, terrifying you into honesty, but ne without being terrifying. He never... Also, he said, um, when I first took his class, I sat down and um, he told a story... Um, there was a girl that was in the class, and it was the first day. 
and he brought her down in the same way that he brought, like, when you first started the class, he'd just bring a random person of, out of 15 of us, sit in the chair, and he would just say, like, there was this woman that sat in the chair, you know, like, probably 20-year-old girl, said, uh, raise your hand, the rest of you, if you think that she is um, the first one in the pool or the last, and, and the last one out. And nobody raised their hand. And he goes, raise your hand if you think that she, her bedroom is everything in its place and right where it should be. And everybody raised their hand. And she started crying. And Sam freaked because he's not there to make people cry. He's not one of those acting teachers that wants to break you down to build you back up. He's never like that. And he's like, oh, shit, like, why are you crying? And she goes, I'm in a, a silver medal uh, uh, like athlete, Olympic swimmer. I have, I have three silver medals. And nobody thinks I'm a swimmer. I don't look... Like, but if you look at her, it's almost like, if you looked at her, short hair, the shoulders, the, the build, like the tan, like she looks like a swimmer. But like, no, but she goes, why don't people perceive me as a swimmer? I've gone out on a How thousand... How much swimming do I have to do? Yeah. <laughs> and and she, she said to him, and she's crying, and she goes, I've gone on a thousand commercial auditions as an athlete, as a swimmer, and last year I went out and actually brought one of my silver medals, which you're not supposed to do. You're not supposed to advertise that. And I still couldn't get a call back on it. And he said, do you have an agent? And she says, yes. And she goes, uh, Sam said, go to your agent tomorrow and say, no more athlete stuff. It's behind the desk, everything in its place, everything just so. And he just met her. Wow. Behind the desk, everything in its place, everything just so. She told her agents that she booked three commercials that week. Because he completely was like, like, you're a swimmer, but we see you as something else. Goldie Hawn is an intellectual, but we want her to play an airhead. Right. Because that's what she's bringing to like, the, the mythological table. There was another story that fits in with that one, which I think it's got, it intersects with the Pat Morita thing, which is in, a, in an area where it's sort of confusing to me, like what's our job as actors and what's our job as producers and casting, that there was a woman in his class that she was like, look, I feel like I want to be an actor. And it's like she, she takes the class and she's doing the exercises and she's getting flustered and more flustered and something is eating away at her. It's clear... Uh, and, and like it builds and builds and builds, and then there's that class where she just sort of breaks down, and she starts, she just breaks down. And this is a story I heard third hand. And Sam goes, "What? what what's wrong? What's happening?" And she goes, "Look, I, it's like who are we fucking kidding? I'm a." And then she described herself, and I can't remember the description. The part of the story is the she's like, "I'm a 280 pound half Filipino." Uh, a 45 year old woman uh, and, I, and I decided I want to be an actor what the fuck am I doing or so, she went on this rant that included like just this her perceived evisceration of herself which included just a functional cataloging of what she was and Sam's response was I want you to go home tonight and I want you to take however many headshots you have left put them each in an envelope and write, don't open this unless you want a 45-year-old half Filipino, blah, 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 like whatever she said, uh, don't open it. Don't open it unless you want that. Uh, on each of the envelopes, I want you to send it to all these people that you sent it to. And it was that she, she, she was the receptionist on Northern Exposure, which millennials don't know. There's a shot, like, like she, it was like the, that was that actor that, that, that it was like, like you're looking for, it, 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 it was just sort of like, I, I, you know, I, I don't know how to, how to file that. It's like, it's sort of, it's this story of it, like, that's what Sam's magic was. It's like, turn this thing that you think is an obstacle into this evil Knievel ramp and leap into the sky and have everyone look at you and mm -hmm. notice these things. It's almost counterintuitive to what we now profess politically and philosophically. The things that we're trying to overcome is like, well, don't, like, you shouldn't be noticing that I look like this. And your first instinct about who I am is actually your problem. You should be actually finding your shame about it. And I don't know, I, I guess I always thought I would watch Sam grow and progress into that era and see how he reacted to it. I know that Sam was very internet averse. He was always so we would walk into class with our cell phones when they were first developping, and the palm tree, and he's like, Dan, are you, uh, are you, is that your phone? 
<laughs> I'm like, yeah. He's like, did you know that that consumes uh, three times as much energy as a refrigerator per week? <laughs> what am I? Okay, okay, sorry. I didn't, uh. Class hasn't started yet. But he was, he was like very, part of, part of Sam to me always felt like he was, he was very sad to watch the world progress. He felt like it was becoming less and less human and stuff. And I hate to beat a dead horse, but I guess I'm, I'm going to Bob and saying, Tell me, tell me he went away n not going, oh, Jesus Christ, you people are fucked up. Well, yeah, like, the, thing, the thing about like, when, you got, when, you right. got, when you got your essences, like, you, and then you have to go in front of the class and say them all. And what was, what's amazing is that everybody in the, you, you think they're either going to boo or cheer, but what they do is they just laugh and they go, oh, it's so cool that that person knows. Like, there, there was a, um, a, a girl in, uh, in my first class, and she was this like really like good looking, like Latina, and she hated one of her essences, and it was hot tamale. Yeah. And she's like, she's like, I fucking hate this one. I fucking hate it. I hate it. And we, we're all dying laughing. And he goes, Why do you hate it? And she goes, Because I've been called hot tamale my entire life. And he hot goes, or and, and, and you and you always will be. He goes, But you have to like. It, it, there's Embrace there's two it. there's two stages. It's acknowledging it and then embracing it. Right. Like you have to throw your arms around and go, fuck it, I'm a hot tamale. And, or Goldie Hawn has to embrace the fact that she's uh, like, er, like, like America's airhead, even though she's a, like a giant intellect. Right. Um, and and uh, Trish just sent me an, uh, an awesome quote from Nick Cave. Uh, embrace your flaws. They're the, only thing of, they're the only thing of interest that you have. Like, your flaws are what makes you. And that's absolutely, like, Sam would have absolutely dug that. Because that, that, that's what he, he... He just had a way of, like, looking at you and going, Jeff... Oh, oh, someone said, hey, uh, I, I sent someone to his class, and I sent a million people to his class, and if you, like, spread it all out, uh, my first girlfriend that sent me there, there must have been a thousand people that went there, including, like, you know, you guys. Um, uh, oh, fuck, I've lost my train of thought. Um... He, I, I, he, he, he had a way of just like, oh, so I said, I, I sent somebody to the class and, and my friend called me up and he goes, hey, uh, Sam says hi. And he also said, tell Jeff he's an asshole. And, and, and he'll get it. <laughs> and I laughed because that, like, he's like, like, tell Jeff you're an asshole. And that, that's Sam going like, remind him that he should call me more. <laughs> like he, 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 he only spoke to you in truth and absolutely essentially. And it's the best. I, f I feel like, for me, Sam was the anchor of everything. When every, anything was going through your mind that you needed help with, yeah. that you needed advice on, that you needed a perspective on that you had not thought of, he was the anchor. And what was interesting is I was with him when Ob the night Obama was elected, and I was with him the night Trump was elected. Oof. And on both nights he cried. <laughs> For was, the same reason, he is like God. I, I I'm so racist. No, I <laughs> I can't remember what. But 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 I guess we, it's, we, it's haven't, really, we question, haven't really like, addressed Sam's Sam, racism. Sam, Sam, Sam says it's like mentor. He just screams mentor. Like you're saying, even though he's like he's a close friend of yours, so you're not gonna like label him as a mentor because he's like your buddy. Right. But at the same time, what you're saying is an anchor. He was there. Did that position? Did, it, did that cause him pain? Did he, was he weary of that? Did he wish that there was like, yeah, I get it. Everyone wants to hear whether or not they need to feel good about themselves. Jesus fucking Christ, is anyone going to ask me a goddamn question about what the fuck I want? I, I mean, I, I, is that know, me projecting? <laughs> yeah. well, well, he, he, lived, he lived in extreme like, back pain and stuff like that. Like, I wonder like, if part of being a... Um, you think and uh, being so em empathetic being that you, you like you, yeah you take on another you you, you, use your microphone. I don't know. I'm sorry. Uh, do you think he embodied? I don't. I don't know. Pain? That, that's that's do something that that, that, that Bob, I think Bob he was a was very a devoted teacher. I feel, I feel like I if, you, if you're so good at spotting other people's pain that you you have to wear that pain. No, 
no, like no. you're an antenna for that kind of stuff. Bob, 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 Bob I feel, you, you, no. I feel like it eased his so. pain. Yeah. Other people's pain would ease his pain because he s would solve it for them. Yeah. He was happy doing he, that. He was oh, happy he doing it. that. He wasn't like invoicing it. Like no. I project that into him. No, it's interesting. Because he's a teacher too. It's interesting because years it. ago there was a televangelist named Terry Cole Whitaker, and who I became friends with. And she was very successful, and she sold DVDs and books and a book called What You Think of Me is None of My Business and all this stuff and everything. And finally, she quit. And I said, she said, I'm quitting. And I said, why are you quitting? She said, because I feel like I'm everybody's crutch, and I don't want to be everybody's crutch. Okay. I want to live my life. Sam did not feel like he that. He didn't feel like that. And way. he wasn't people's crutch. He taught people, and he had his own private life away from that. But... His relationship with me was not like, uh, you know, I'm your crutch. It was like, it, it was friend, but it was also give and take because I would advise him too. Like, he'd, let, me, let me throw something around you and see what you think of that. You know, because we had interesting perspectives because we knew each other for so long, for so many years that we could be objective about each other. But I what think was like a favorite thing of his on the off chance that we were to like, oh, we got a podcast. Like, what was a cause of Sam's like as far as charity going one way or another? We have a new thing on the podcast where we like divert things. Did Sam have a favorite actual like charity as far as like writing checks where it's like, you know what I really love is puppies for poor people or whatever. Mm, Democrats. Well, just just straight up Democrats. Just, he Democrats, just loves the. Dem yeah. Have you seen the the Michael Moore documentary though, the recent one? No, I just God told you damn about it. it. Fucking no, yeah, shook us yeah, right into the Bernie camp. Like we were like, God damn, Obama's a piece of shit. Like I I did not I did not expect the Michael Moore documentary to make me go fuck Democrats. <laughs> It was, uh, it was a really disappointing a story bruiser. in it. It was yeah. a weird, like, uh, pop -a matic bubble of shit balls. Like, this whole thing is fucked. I, I never, I, 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 I guess I'm glad for it. But anyways, I. But Sam was like, it's, a, it's like, 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 you, 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 he was a, he was a died in the wool Democrat. He's like, look, we, we gotta, we gotta make this tent and like. Like, like go straight forward. He was a Hillary guy. He's he would he would have been a Pelosi guy, slash Elizabeth Warren guy maybe or whatever. Who knows? But but like Sam, Sam 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 couldn't have been more punk rock. But he was like practical. He's like let's fucking win this. Stop dicking around. Right. Maybe is what he would. He's also a, a huge donor to uh, California hair bears. <laughs> Um, all right. Well, look, uh, Sam, I, uh, I feel like a suckling pig. Like, I feel like I got so much of you. I, I just, all I did was come to your, tr your trough and just like lick and suck and selfishly preen. Like, Ugh, I guess this guy tells me this and tells me that. And I just, I never anticipated that he would be somebody that I, one of my favorite times of my life was when, you know, before you and I were working and we would go to the Rustic Inn and we had an hour before class and you would go home to your crap apartment uh, in Los Feliz and Dan would write me a monologue and then write himself a monologue and I would learn it in the car on the way there and we would go in there and do it and Sam kept a lot of the monologues that Dan wrote like right before class and D disseminated them to like a lot of students and some of the best shit you've ever written was stuff that you wrote last second for to go up there and do you know like a minute long monologue because it was a great writing exercise you go through these classes and you go oh this guy's essence is uh, I'm here to pick your pocket and suck your dick or something and you'd be like wow that's specific <laughs> and then you're like okay what if that guy had to talk for a minute and like hey I'm here to pick your pocket and suck your dick it was like like the, these essence, of like writing for you, or like writing monologues for you. You wrote, you wrote, you wrote one for me. Uh, it was like a, a CIA guy that was like jumps from train to train, like on top of it, and kills people, and just brags about how much he loves being in the CIA and killing people. And you wrote that in like five minutes, and it was fucking amazing. Years before Chuck. <laughs> I mean, I was like amazing. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 there's a million anecdotes of Sam bringing out people's uh, humanity and bringing out their ab like absolute honesty and quality. Somebody getting up in class and looking at their cards and people wrote, wrote down and a guy yelling, I'm not loud! <laughs> or, or, or a woman going, hard to handle, fuck this class, and walking outside. 
like, like, like people complaining about their own essences and doing an impression of themselves. Like, like there's, there's no way to replace him. He, like, I, I, I hope we're not boring you to death by a person that you don't know. Well, what are they going to say to that? <laughs> Yeah, you are. They're not, like, not like, if they're good like, people. Like, I, I was, I was, I was in a long car car ride with Drew Carey, like, like when I first met, like very early when I knew him. And I was telling him about Sam's class, and he was driving, and he goes, "I want to know who I am." <laughs> and, and, and he was like on the Drew Carey show. He was like the number one show, and he goes, I, "I, I don't really know who I am." And he took the class, and he came to me, and he goes, he goes, he sent everybody he knew to the, to Sam's class. He goes, "We we think we know who we are." There's compliments we wish people would pay us, but they don't. And there's insults that we wish people wouldn't pay us, but they do. And you have to own all that shit. And my favorite essence of Drew's is doing the best I can with what I've got. And no, he goes, I'm doing and he the goes, best I can with what I get. He goes, he goes, yeah. and he goes yeah, I'll give you a free car if you want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's why he's brilliant at, 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 on Price is Right, is because like, like, when Drew gives you a car, it's like, this is fucking amazing. All right, well, we'll get another person to come up with this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah uh, 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 shit, fire in the wind. Uh, fuck me. Oh, are you, are you, uh, are you having Sam, a stroke? What's going on? Sam is gone now. And so here's, look, here's my thing. Young people. Uh, because there's not going to be another Sam. And as we hear from these hot tamale stories, um, actually, Sam, yeah, if there was another Sam, it wouldn't take the same form because tomorrow's Sam, if they were identical to last year's Sam, would be, what the fuck? That's super racist or whatever. <laughs> like, like it, it, the, the, I, I would say to young people, like what I learned from this dude that I had uh, thankfully intersected with is, is there a way and like Instagram and Twitter are not going to, they're not going <laughs> to be offering this to you. No one is going to tell you that this is important um, to explore yourself warts and all shame and all, to pour hot scalding water into yourself and see how low it goes and what pockets it fills. Fig like, like ask yourself these questions. What are you ashamed of? What, what do you think is, is, this, is this thing that you refuse to hear about yourself? Uh, if somebody says this to you, that's a deal breaker. You're going to walk away. You're going to, if someone said this to you, you're going to explode because, oh my God, that's your, uh, holy shit, everyone says that to me. Nobody's ever said that to me because I've done such a good job of protecting it. You, you, you've got this time on earth to like open your own hood and like go into that shit and like figure it out. The clues that Sam turned us on to were, but I don't know if kids these days ever pass notes. Like now that hey, you guys grew up with cell phones, so why would you ever pass a note? I had a box full of letters from girls I had crushes on and vice versa that Sam was able to tell me, go home and look at all this. And of course I saved all those fucking notes from Gina and I was able to go, holy shit, she's calling me capricious and aloof and interesting and organic. And then it's like slob, weird, lazy, fucking nerd like 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 and noticing like what happens when people fall in and out of love with you but you have your texts you can go back through them uh I, like what what do what do people yeah, say it's about easier you? then you can like search for yeah, keywords yeah, and yeah. stuff yeah, what, what 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 do people say about you when they're excited about you what do people say about you when they when they're your biggest fan what 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 do people say about you when they want to really hurt you What's the worst thing that someone could say about you? Shit on a scarf and then return it. <laughs> Sam, 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 I think if you were here, would say, start there. Start coming up with adjectives for this stuff. Then get out a thesaurus and look up the synonyms for those adjectives. Make big lists of the things that people have said about you. And then look at the synonyms for those things. And find words that spike your your rage, your shame, your silence, your emotions, and start asking yourself, what if I had permission to be these things? What if these things were the only point of me being around? That might be a really good direction to go as a writer. I, t I mean, so many of our listeners, like I, I think a disproportionate amount of our listeners are aspiring writers because I've snowed them into thinking I, 
I, I, I'm, a, I'm a writer. Why am I self-deprecating? I'm an amazing writer. I, I, I'm so drunk. I'm sorry. I, well, one of my essences is, uh, is, is ends a show badly. Um, I, but, but how, I, how many Sam people is like, gone. There's no more class we, to take. We know a lot of people that, that, that have passed away, but how many people do we eulogize this much, and why are we doing it? And I, I think, like, and I, I don't want to make myself cry because I'm a crier, but uh, he, he was a healer. And how many people can you say that about? Well, because it's, it's, it's somebody, if it was a Western, it would be like, well, I got, I got seven bullet holes in the back of my jacket, and it's like, they all represent seven times that Sam saved my life. Like, I wouldn't be here. It's unfair that he's gone, and we're here. If that's why you, I, I, that's why I can't, that's why I'm like scrambling to like, what are we supposed to do? What 40 are we supposed to pull? Yeah, I, I, when I uh, got the call, my first thought was, I cannot imagine Sam not being on this planet. Yeah. That's, that was my feeling. Never thought about it. And uh, never thought about it. It was never something we even talked about, about uh, that even being a possibility. And he came to my workshop. I teach singing workshops. And he came to my workshop one night. He said, I, wanna, I really want to be a part of that and see what you do. And the next Friday night when we got together, he said, it's so interesting to me that without us ever talking about it, that what you're giving these people is very similar to what I do. So that if somebody came in and said, I want to play Eliza Doolittle in My Fair Lady, and I would say, D do you really feel a connection with that character? Mm, no, I just like those songs. That's, that's not it. You, you have to find out how the world sees you. That will tell you how you're castable, and that will help you maneuver through life so that people are receptive to you. And, um, you know, he moved me every week of my life, and I, I just, I cannot, I, I haven't yet been able to wrap my head around the loss of this man who was so dear, and, um, on Wednesday, I have to sing at his funeral, and it's going to, I mean, it's going to be very difficult. To Friday nights is, you know, it's Sam. But how lucky we all are and blessed exactly. is what I feel at the end of the day to have had this man touch our lives in the way he did. I, and I, you guys I, I, know about his buried gold. <laughs> His Nazi gold. Is, was, uh, oh, his uh, Nazi gold? Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> well, why bury it then? Why not just let it be Nazi gold and... What, you... <laughs> if I had Nazi gold, I wouldn't bury it. I'd be like, well, it's Nazi gold. Take it at your peril. You've got to bury your Nazi gold. All right, well, I guess... You, you're going to leave your Nazi gold just hanging around? What were you going to say? I... Nothing. I, I, I was, I, I was going <laughs> to agree with, uh, with him, saying that like, uh, it's lucky to have met him and uh, maybe nobody in, in, in our live audience, but lots of people that have listening, uh, are listening to us have met him or got to meet him. But really, he's the reason why um, I, I am where I am. And like, he brought a lot of people together. And he was a real artist just by sitting in a chair and asking simple questions and letting you be you. It's pretty, it's pretty crazy. Um, he would listen to you do yeah the shittiest monologue in the world. Think he'd come in and go like, "Here's the thing, whoa, it's me, hey, I'm Johnny Greaseball," hey, yo. <laughs> and he would just take it all in. He would, and then he'd go, "Why'd you, why'd you pick this piece? Mm. Uh, uh, I like Johnny Greaseball. Uh, it's my favorite movie. Wh what's Johnny Greaseball doing in this monologue? He's uh, well, he's he's being kind of a shithead, but don't judge him." Don't judge him. That was a big thing I learned from Sam as a writer. Yeah. Don't judge that fucking character. Like when I was doing community, it was like, no, 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 no. Like, 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 like never judge the character. And, 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 like, 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 how dare you assume that your character's being a piece of shit? No, the character is trying to accomplish something. He's try Johnny Greaseball, what's he trying to do? He's trying to convince, trying to convince. Well, have you ever tried to convince somebody of something? Uh, yeah, I suppose. Well, wait, 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 like, what, think about what, what have you ever tried to convince somebody of? Think about something, just anything. I don't know, my mom, I had to get her to co sign a car I bought. Like, uh, you had to get your mom to co sign a car loan. Wait, how old were you? Uh, 20, 22. Where, where were you? 
I, I had to go to her kitchenette and uh, to, what was the wallpaper? What did it look like? It was yellow. Go. <laughs> he would he would just you never knew when he was gonna do that. Go. And and you had the monologue memorized and you would memorize it as an actor like you what you know like, way I'm Johnny Greaseball and here's why I always have it and then you go go and you're thinking about your mom's wallpaper and trying to convince your mom and you're like you just be like I'm Johnny Greaseball <laughs> do you want to buy a bowling ball <laughs> and like in almost invariably sometimes twice sometimes he'd do it three times yeah. some every once in a while you'd get the sense of like yeah, this person needs another, they need to mold this over. But most of the time, it was like watching a chiropractor on a caveman just go, crack! Yeah. <laughs> like, like, like where you came in one way and he just would go, uh, like you memorize this model, like, and then you go, do this, and then you would, go, you would do it completely differently and the room would be silent because you had nailed the Johnny Greaseball monologue. Actor or not, good actor, bad actor, who gives a shit? You were sitting in a chair, and he was like, you memorized it. Now, say it like you're trying to convince somebody, uh, if that's what the intention is. Yeah, and he, he, it he, was he, like, you would walk out of there going, holy shit. He told a great story about uh, Robert Duvall, who he worked on Network with. And I, I, I did one of Robert Duvall's monologues from that, uh, where he's firing William Holden. And I did it again and a couple times, and it, it went okay. And I said, w when Robert Duvall did that, like, how many takes was that? Was that like take 10? And he goes, he did it once. And, and it's like, that's how good Robert Duvall was. And, and the, when he did the, what was the, the Prophet? What was that one called? Where he was, I, I, oh, fuck, I can't. Apostle. The, uh, the Apostle, thank you. Um, it, somebody asked him in an interview, how do you, how do you prepare for that? Like, like, and he goes, I, I, I'm, I'm so good at this now. I've been doing it for so long. I don't really have to prepare. I just learn the lines. And I think of one thing. And this is a great thing that Sam told me because I overcomplicate things. He said, uh, I, I walk on the set and I just look, I just find something. And, I, and, and when I did that monologue, I looked up and I said, wow, there's a lot of lights up there. <laughs> and it sounds goes, like cheating. You're an actor. Uh, and, and then he, he goes, just one thing that makes you feel like a human being, like one thing that puts you in the present moment, not your, your, your preparation or anything. It's, oh, geez, wow, look at all these lights. And then he goes, he goes, I know the shit's there. And that's what Sam taught me. He's like, you have all of the emotions right there. Like, just let them happen. You can do that. And don't, don't overthink things. Anyway, we love you, Sam. Shrab, you've been awful quiet. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Jesus, it's 1010. Yeah, I know. We're, we're, we've gone Fuck. over it. I mean, what? Sam would not want to be remembered Rob, with an Rob, extra long could, podcast. Could, could, you, you, do, you, do you want to put a little punctuation on this, Shrab? Yeah, if I can uh, earn your keep. <laughs> earn my keep. Um... No, I mean, I've been quiet a lot because, it, I mean, Sam does mean, like, so much to me. And, Prove it. And uh, it's, it, it's hard to not talk to him about him without getting choked up. So, it's, uh, so that's why I've been quiet. Uh, but, no, Sam, Sam taught me a lot about just, just believing in myself and who I was and, and just being happy in my own skin. And that's it. Well, let's take that moment of silence. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm breaking up. We love you, Sam. Goodbye, Sam. That's been Harmon Town. Thank you so much, you guys. <laughs> Cody and Randy Heller. Bob Garrett, thank you so much for being with us. Rob Schraub, everybody. I'm Jeff Davis, your crying crump troller. Dan Harmon's been your mayor. Thank you all so much for coming. We love you. And as church rep from uh, Nick Cave, embrace your flaws. They're the only thing of interest that you have. Drive fast and take chances, all.